We're going. So when you're there, like now, say it, do it, sing it. Hello, lunch can bring us together. <laughs> Good evening. You're back with Hammer Away tonight. Uh, it is Thursday night, 7 p.m. And tonight we will be having Graham Bonnet on the uh, program. But I'm going to reveal who my other special guest is right now, Guy Kingsbury. Hey, hey, it? hey. Hello. Look, you look all phonesy. Are you phony? <laughs> hey, I'm the phones. <laughs> You're the phones. Oh, <laughs> did we just do that? I think so. Did we just do that? I'm doing, uh, um, this is my second night using my brand new Father's Day gift, my new microphone. I love Yeti it. Microphone. I love it. Thank you, my son and daughter-in-law. That was fantastic. My daughter and son-in-law treated me and my wife to a wonderful meal the other day. They uh, made some smoked ribs, and I made some smoky black bean baked beans. Nice. And uh, sometime soon, when we do, we do go game go beyond. So I'm going to be starting to do some of those too. And within that, I'm finally going to make my Viking honey beer bread. So we'll That's be having, tasty. yeah, we'll be doing that video sometime soon here and, uh, and everything. So um, uh, same as last week, folks, it happens like this sometimes. Sometimes we're waiting for folks to come into the show and that is just fine. It's what we do. So it kind of gives a little, um, uh, um, a little surprise to the show. But in the meantime, we do have things to uh, to talk about. One thing I want to tell you about today is something that I just got, and I think it's right here. This is a fantastic record. If you've not heard it, and I'm going to take it out of the case, but you can see here that it's Freddie Salem and the Wildcats. Uh, this album is from the 80s. Um, soon after... You know, it's in that uh, when the Outlaws were doing the Los Ombres Malo album um, in that kind of a time frame. But Freddie put this album out and uh, you can get it again um, because of Rock Candy Records. I'm going to be getting a hold of these guys because I am hoping that they can put me in touch with a lot of the people that they have on their label. Um, this album is fantastic. It took me many um, years to hear it. I'm going to be starting a new segment on the show uh, that may be like a short, sometime in between show uh, where it's going to be things that I just never listened to. Uh, Guy, is there like an album? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to switch my thought. Not an album, but is there a song that, uh, well, hey, here we go. Uh, let me go ahead. Graham is here. Let me find this arrow here. And here we oh, go. Oh, here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How is everything today? Oh, not much. Perry. <laughs> oh, fantastic. No, I'm sorry. I just, uh, I almost missed this. because a recording, as you pr probably see here. Yeah. I've just been in the uh, studio, so to speak. Oh, and, that's uh, fantastic. And, well, uh, yeah. No apologies necessary. We all have yeah. busy lives, right? Especially these days, trying to. Oh, crap, yeah. You know, and yeah, especially with technology, the things we can do now. Yeah. That's I mean, amazing. it stretches we're, us. Yeah, we're, whereas you used to have to do everything like 20,000 times and take hours doing harmonies. Now it's really quick. And yeah. uh, Comrade's been really great uh, working the machines there. Oh, so that's it, sounds really, it sounds great. It just sounds really good. Wow. Well, I'm trumping now, but um, it does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you something right away. By the way, my name is Guy Kingsbury. I'm a huge, hey, huge fan and longtime follower of yours. Oh. And you have a voice that not only do I admire immensely, uh, you harmonize so beautifully with yourself. Oh. I mean, whenever I hear your voices where you've layered pieces in there, it just it sounds so powerful oh. <laughs> and so I mean, fast. Yeah. And I just love that. Well, you know, I'm a Beach Boys fan, and uh, I love harmony. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, when I first put the band together uh, with Alcatraz, no, actually, when I started doing harmonies, really in Rainbow, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember Richie Blackmore saying to Roger Glover, "How are we going to do this live on stage?" He said, "We probably, <laughs> we probably won't." But um, <laughs> I mean, I, me and Roger were both harmony freaks, and Cozy uh, was a huge uh, Beach Boys fan and Beatles fan, like me. 
And uh, once again, this is a car with Cozy. He always used to play, uh, you know, um, I don't know, California Girls or something, or um, uh, Carl and the Passions, all those kind of albums that they made, which I love. You know, those harmonies and those chords are um, fantastic. You know, uh, Brian Wilson, to me, is one of the greatest songwriters ever, but he's not, um, he's not bad. Right. Like, are we all really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some some of us just have a, a bigger playground than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I always I always used to say that um, heavy metals for, for people that don't, don't know how to dance, they could just go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, R and B is for uh, you know taking a girlfriend out and all that kind of thing. But um, yeah, so how's what do I do? How's it going? It's going great. Everything is good. Um, I have what I call every show. We do a lightning round, which is five quick questions. Sometimes yeah. they're quick. Sometimes they're not. So, you know, oh, we've had lightning rounds that last 12 minutes. We've had lightning rounds that last an hour and a half. But that's neither right. here nor there. Right. But so these sometimes these are my quirky questions. And sometimes they're quick questions to just get out of the way. Okay. So here we go. Yeah. How do you uh prep for shows and does it differ from when you started and were in some of the bands that you were in to now oh uh, no i've uh actually me and ronnie dio prepped the same way i remember saying to him do you warm up for shows said, no it's a waste of notes and uh, i i i'm the same it's just like uh i hope everything's going to be there when i go on there's plenty of volume there's plenty of, if the band's really kicking then i don't worry about it because it makes me you know go for it so I, don't, I know that a lot of singers do. Uh, Robin McCauley, one of my friends, he does uh, all the time. I go, what, are you, what the hell are you doing? You know, he's doing all these funny noises. I'm saying, does that help? He says, oh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> it <laughs> it really does, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, uh, I've just been lucky. Some, I mean, sometimes I have to watch out if I have a cold or something, you know. Got to be very careful because, you know, the stuff we do is pretty uh, out there. You know, I mean, vocal wise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll, I will tell you that um, over the years I've worked on my vocals. I'm a singer. But yeah. one of my biggest uh, helpers has been Guy. And uh, over oh. the years, because he has a voice that belts like you. Yeah. Like Glenn, Glenn Hughes is another big uh, idol of his, uh, big influence. Yeah. And so he's got this huge yeah. voice. So he's been a, a major impact to me playing live because I oh. I didn't play anything till I was 36. So now I'm a bass player and a singer in a band and Guy and I have yeah. been playing and known each other for a little over 30 years. Oh, um, wow. And so, yeah, Guy especially. I mean, I, I can't really attest to all of it, but how your health and your sinuses and all of that can really, you got to watch it. And if you still have to deliver, you got to deliver. Yeah. yeah. He, he and I live in a horrible place yeah. for sinus and allergy problems. I mean, What's St. Louis, was, we live in a horrible place for sinus and allergy problems. Next to you Guam, this is probably the worst place you could possibly live for sinus St. Louis. Yeah, well, oh, terrible. shit. No, well, I, I lived in, um, in Australia for three years uh, mm. with my ex wife. And I tell you, I came back with asthma. And I have oh. asthma now and something I never had. And I'm going, what the fuck? Where did this come from, you know? Yeah. But uh, there I am, like, you know, wheezing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's not exactly the greatest thing for a singer to have, you know, asthma. Nope. <laughs> it just doesn't really go. Um, no. You know, a drummer or a singer with asthma, like, can you breathe? Yes, I can breathe. Thank you. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I take a little thing once in a while, you know. But, yeah, well, um, yeah. Pretty good. It's not that bad now. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You know, I went over to. Oh, uh, boy, okay, guy. <laughs> I went over to Europe uh, last yeah. year, uh, right before everything shut down, and yeah. uh, I was on. I did a few. Sh I was uh, along with the band Wayward Sons over in England, yeah. and uh, and when I was coming back, I was concerned because I, the change in the climate, the yeah. whatever it was, my exhaustion, yeah. whether I had COVID for a bit, I don't know, but. It just, I was like, there's something yeah. happening here, and I hope I can sing again. But yeah, now I'm better than ever. So, you know, Incredible. so I it's, why. Uh, I think a lot it's of it's, good. yeah, mental. you're mine. I think it's just 
pushing it's through. Better, so. It is. It's all, a lot of it's all in there. You know, uh, when I lived in England in back in the 70s, mm -hmm. I had a whole year where I couldn't sing. And I was going to the studio, you know, you have to pay you know, huge fees to bloody book the studio for three or four hours, whatever. And I was going in there, standing in the microphone, as soon as the red light goes on, I couldn't sing anything. And it's red night, uh, red night, <laughs> red light syndrome. So yeah. I went to my doctor and he said, there's nothing wrong with your voice. He says, you're fine. He said, you've got a loud speaking voice and you have a very loud singing voice. And uh, he said, it's here, it's in your mind. So he gave me, um, I don't know, back then it'd probably be uh, Valium or something, just to relax me. Totally you know? down, yeah. Yeah. What, so, what, year, what year do you think that was? Oh, crap. It'd be... Uh, was it mid... 70... Shoot, probably about 1975. Okay. okay. But a whole, whole year of worrying if I was ever going to sing again, you know, it was very strange. You'll never play the violin again, but I don't play. You know, it was, uh, it was like, you know, but you don't play. Ah, no. Just a joke. You know, I, was, I used to make fun of it because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. You know, yeah. so what I would do is um, I was in the cab one day going to the studio, and uh, I was talking about it to the cab driver. He said to me, oh, you know, um, there's a band in England called the Bonzo Dog Band, Do Dog Band, and they're like a comedy band. And he said, Viv Stanshaw, the singer, said he would sit in the back of his cab and drink a whole bottle of whiskey before he went in the studio. So wow. I thought, well, I'll do that then. Which didn't, <laughs> which, well, it didn't work very well at all. But um, yeah, I, I, I was very calm, but nothing else. <laughs> I remember falling yeah. under, the, you know, under the bloody, you know, in the, in the control room under the desk, <laughs> snoring. So uh, I didn't do that again. I try not to. And uh, I've been sober now for another year. Yeah, I, I fell off the wagon about a year ago when this virus hit, because I was shit scared yeah. like everybody else. Um, my girlfriend and I broke up. I broke up with my band, my ex band, and uh, everything was going wrong. I went back to my old apartment and uh, living there, and I thought, well, what can I do? You know, this virus is happening all on my own. Um, I feel like shit. And, um, you know, I was very depressed because of our breakup. And the band break thing was really annoying me. And I ended up like crawling around the apartment on, on my hands and knees at night to go to the, you know, take a piss or something. And <laughs> I didn't know what was up with me. And I thought, well, I've probably got the COVID thing. So I called 911 twice. I said, there's something wrong with me. And um, they said, no, you're fine. Your temperature's good. Your heart's good. All the rest of it. But it's, again, it's the mind. You know, it made me ill. Not necessarily my body. You know, yeah, I've been, definitely I've been telling that. people that like crazy. I'm yeah. like, stress will kill yeah. you. Yeah. And I, mean, and I watched like, the liquor stores are like selling out, you know? Mm, so, yeah. anyway, I'm not, I'm not doing that uh, again because it made me That's very good. ill. It made me yeah. worse. <laughs> yeah. How was your snoring, though? Was that on key? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was the only one there. I said, I, I broke up my door. I haven't set up a tape recorder for that. Huh? He's asleep under the panel, but damn, he sounds good. Oh, yeah. Listen to that. We got a mix for that. We can do oh, that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. There's lots of things you could put in, into harmony, aren't there? I, I was there thinking, are. Uh, you know, I was, um, did you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a harmony? Oh. Yeah, because it's only just like one note. Well, yeah. it, it is sort of. If you play it really well, woo, woo, they do all these crazy things in Australia with the didgeridoo. Oh, do they really? Yes. <laughs> didgeridoo. What are we still talking about the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever heard these people that can split their voice into two or three tones and move yeah. one of them, make harmonies with themselves? That just blows my mind. I mean, I can still exactly. play my voice, but being able yeah. to control the pitches yeah. of the different voices is amazing to me. Yeah. Blows, blows hey, I tell you who did that, Kenny Rogers. Did you ever hear his really? voice split? Really? Yeah. You'd hear, like a, you'd hear like two of them, but it was like the octave, octave higher or an octave lower. Wow. It's just a thing. It happened to me once or twice um, on something. Well, I can't remember what now, but a certain track I was doing, and uh, I don't know, I hit a certain note, and oh, I know where it was. It was way back in the 60s when um, I was with my cousin, and we had a, uh, we were called the Marbles. Yeah. We were in and Trevor. Trevor. This the marble thing. Yeah, well, back then we were doing a track, me and him, and uh, just the two of us doing back in harmony. Then we would go up and listen in the and the uh, control room, and I said, "Who's doing that other harmony?" And it was a ghost voice. 
It get, you get so close That's sometimes cool. in harmony, you get an octave or a semitone up or down or sideways. Not not, not a semitone. I mean, a um, what do you call it? It's an octave. Uh, not, not an octave. A, Maybe a third or a fifth or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it was a perfect bloody harmony. Yeah, and that's awesome. we were just awesome. doing like Everly Brothers, me and him, you know, just the two of us. And this other thing, who's that? I said, we should put that on. <laughs> so we went back in and did it <laughs> for real. But it's Ghost so weird. Machine. I remember. Yeah, sorry. So, so, no, so Trevor is your, he's your cousin? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I lost Trevor. Uh, it must be ooh, about seven years ago now. Wow. Uh, sorry to hear that. It, yeah, me too, because I I talk about him every day or so now. Um, yeah. He says to me, you know, I wish I'd have met him. And uh, so do I. He's a great and fantastic musician. And he wrote this book just before he died, all about yeah. guitar playing. Yeah. And uh, it was all that really jazzy shit. And that was what he was like, a very studious guy, really, yeah. really musical. And when we did play live on stage, he would, you know, uh, orchestrate the band, you know. Yeah, all group, you know, saxophones and whatever the hell, piano, guitar, whatever. And he would, do that. and he taught himself from a freaking book, you know, which was just amazing, you know. Wow. Kind of I did find a copy of that. Yeah, well, the, well we did an album, it's called uh, The Marvels. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. And uh, uh, some of the things were produced by uh, Barry or Robin Gibb, and mm -hmm. some other stuff by. Oh God, I can't remember now. But anyway, it's all, a lot of the songs are like demos, and they ended up on a on an album eventually, an, uh, an LP. An LP, remember those folks? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And it's, I'm pretty proud of it. It sounds pretty good for two 19-year-old, 20-year-old kids. We, we did pretty good. And uh, thanks to, to the Gibb brothers, uh, I'm in this business now, you know, yeah. because that was a hit record for us and started, well, not so much Trevor's career, but it did mine. Yeah. Right. He wasn't much of a rock singer, but he was a very, uh, his favorite music was like, um, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, yeah, that kind cool. of, you know, a great, but a great, a great guitar player and not a great writer, but yeah. He, and he and I was, a, you know, I was telling Guy that he yeah. worked with the Bee Gees over doing some stuff in Australia. Oh, he did? Right? Didn't, mm. I was thinking that's what I had. Me? No, him. You, he did. Trevor, did he? Did he did, what? Did he work? He did some work with the Bee Gees. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He he um yeah. when he was uh, I guess about 13, he wow. when when I he wasn't living in England that's why I lived in Australia. And mm -hmm. uh, he sent me these demos over of the Bee Gees. It was called Trevor Gordon and the Bee Gees. Wow. And, uh, yeah. And uh a song called House Without Windows, and it was great. I mean Morris didn't even, I remember Morris Gibb didn't even have a bass, so he tuned down a uh, regular guitar. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Just, you know, a lot of guys have done that. Yeah. You know, it's fucking great. But I mean, they made really good records, even when they were kids, that young. You know, Barry is just an endless music box. You know, he's got fucking tons of music in his head, and he can sort of uh, adapt to whatever style. If, you, if I ask him tomorrow, you know, could you do me an R&B for this song? Something like R&B. I mean, the first record we did was kind of R&B, I think. Wow. They called us the British uh, the Righteous Brothers. I mean, that's sort of what nice. it was like. Wow. Yeah. I, I, those days, to me, are precious, you know. Yeah. Really that's, that's great history. And who well, would ever yeah. think to connect you with somebody like the Gibbs? Yeah. Because of your style that you're known for now, <laughs> and the kind of music that they've been known for putting out, which is I wonderful. Know. I mean, they're amazingly talented cats, no doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I'm more of a hard rocker and, you know, stuff you yeah, do yeah, now, yeah. progressive and hard rock <laughs> stuff. I just love yeah. it. And I've been into that I forever and ever. I started doing that to, you know, all that yeah. disco stuff. <laughs> I hate it. And my, my dad said to me, he says, what is Barry doing? I said, I don't know, Dad. You know, I said, it's horrible. I said, it is. <laughs> but, but then then what happened was Robin wrote me a tune, a, a sort of a disco tune. And uh, it became a hit in Australia. And New Zealand, wow. it was like a number one hit. I couldn't That's believe good. it. It was a song called Warm Ride. And it did yes. Okay. yes. I can't see you. Where have you gone? Oh, I'm just right here. Oh. I just put you on the screen. But I was I was gonna get to that in a minute. Oh, okay. I, I love that song, and 
it, it goes along with something I'll say in a minute. But yes, what a beautiful, what a beautiful song. Well, warm ride. Yes. Yeah. Your, well, your version is yeah. such a good. That's so good. Oh, it's so different, isn't it? It was. Yeah. They wrote that song when Saturday Night Fever came out, and it was going to be in that movie. Yeah. So they had one song too many. <laughs> one too many. So they gave it to me. Here, Graham. <laughs> There you you know, they can do with it with you. And uh, I tell you who uh, Robin wrote it. And when um, when I got the demo, it was it was diabolical. I couldn't tell what the fuck he was trying to get at. <laughs> <laughs> Robin doesn't play anything. Bless him. I can't believe all that they've all gone. It's yeah, scary man. And Robin didn't play anything. He didn't play guitar. Didn't play piano. But he played melodica. You know those things you blow. Yeah, you yeah. Play a kind of thing. That's how he got the melodies together. It was on melodica. And this thing for Warm Ride, I got this. I, I said to my manager, I said, what the fuck? What is this? What do I do? He says, well, it was going to go in uh, Saturday Night Fever. but it still might. Uh, okay. Blah, blah, blah. So I did it. And uh, Barry Gibb came along and rescued me because he listened <laughs> to it. And he started laughing. He said, well, I think I've got to fix this a bit, Graham. Like, uh, you know, it was, a, it was all over the place. It was nothing like the finished product. Let me say that. But Robin, very, very talented guy. His wow. voice kind of annoyed people sometimes. That fault, you know, the vibrato. But I, yeah. I loved it because that was their sound. You know, I Barry and him. Part of their sound, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because Barry had that sort of really R&B voice and Robin had this weird vibrato voice, yeah. which he, he liked R&B too. His and I mean, was Roy Orbison. He was very emotive that voice yeah. is you know i started a joke and you're just like wow you're totally in like a gilbert o'sullivan like that yeah, yeah. you're just like oh what a depressing yeah. moment you're like yeah gilbert yeah, you know, those, uh, the songs they used to write was a bit like gilbert o'sullivan yeah about, about you know like mr Dur, like mr this and mr that you know uh there's a guy in oxford street in london i used to see all the time um a homeless guy and um Oh, what did they call it? Uh, oh, they called it Craze Fenton Kirk, a really posh name. But, the, but this guy was actually a homeless guy. His clothes are all tattered. And they wrote this song about Craze Fenton Kirk, who he really was. You know, so they, they wrote stories, you know. And that's where I kind of got my ideas from, was from the way Barry wrote. But he used to get fucking uh, loaded first. And, well, stoned, anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back then, back then. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta float to find the right thing. And yeah, you, know, you do. Yeah, I, as, long yeah. As, you know, as long as you don't, you know, go too far. Yeah, I know. I can't. That stuff uh, doesn't agree with me. No. Yeah, I hear you. Well, here, let me see if I can get because I know based on something you just said too. I, I want to make sure that guy throws you a big compliment too. Um, what was your biggest on stage mishap? Mishap. Yeah. You know, you know what it is, don't you? No, I, I, I no. Yes, you, I'm, you do. This is not a loaded question. I get this asked me all the. Time. Oh, do you? Well, okay. What, what, if you don't want to answer it, you don't have to. No, it's all right. Everybody knows it anyway. I thought you. I thought you were kidding me. No, enlighten me. I, I, I may. When you tell me, I might go. Oh yeah, but no. Right now, I'm going. <laughs> not a loaded question. Well, okay. I was with MSG, Michael Shanker. Okay. And. um Great album, by the way. We made an assault attack. We made that one album with dear Ted McKenna. Bless him, too. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with Michael recently and with Ted before Ted died. It was just horrible. But um, what the story is, um, we had a gig in Sheffield, at Sheffield University in England, and I wanted to get some jeans made. And I heard that there were, uh, like, jeans you could have made in an hour in Oxford Street. Wow. And so I went down there and... Had these, had these bloody pants made. I thought, well, yeah, they're good. They're all nice and tight and all the rest of it. And uh, so we had this gig in Sheffield, and they split. My, my pants split. Oh, oh my no. <laughs> so, so what happened was I made a whole thing of the, the penis. Now, it was part of the act. <laughs> it, started, it started like that, but it got very coarse eventually. And very I started wearing it. Oh, I was shit-faced. To put it mildly, I've been drinking in the afternoon with White Snake. They were on before us <laughs> at this gig, and I got absolutely blotto. And I hadn't seen Mickey Moody for a while, and oh come on, you know, we started boozing, and 
Oh. It, it was horrible. I had to go off stage after about one song. Oh, and it was man. very embarrassing. They had to carry on on, my, on their own. And I went back yeah. to the rescue by one of the, the crew. They said, we've got to get out of here. They're going to fucking kill you. I said, well, yeah. we've we got to go. So went back to the hotel and I phoned my manager in London. I said, I, I fucked up. I went to sleep, got on the train, got back to London. And I said, well, we've got the big gig in uh, Donington. We were headlining Donington, I think it was. I think it was Donington, Castle Donington. Um, and uh, I said, well, he said, you can't do it, Graham. I said, why not? He said, they fired you. And I said, bloody hell, I, I would be all right. You know, I know I can do this show, except I got fucking pissed the night, you know, a couple of nights ago. But they fired me, and I'm not surprised, basically. Wow. Well, uh, and now for someone who needs no introduction, <laughs> we bring on the other white snake. <laughs> Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I'm the not other like, white everybody snake. knows that. And if I get asked that by anybody to say, "Did anything embarrassing ever happen to you on the road?" That was basically oh. it. It wasn't really embarrassing. It was I was too out of it to really be embarrassed. You know. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've I, like you know, I've had times where I, you know, I was going to go jump over a monitor and I missed, and I'm like stumbling, and I'm like, ah, uh, this is yeah. Crazy. You know, and <laughs> guy, That's why I pretty much hold still anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't do much of that. There's a couple well, of my favorite really stories. Hey, guy does story? have a couple of my favorite stories, mishap stories. Um, oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I'll have them impart one to you before the end. Um, okay. <laughs> so here's one for you. This is one of our quirky questions in the lightning round, because that's what we do, quirky questions. Okay. If you could have, have, if you could have appeared in one of your favorite films, what would the movie be and who would you portray in that film? James Dean. In which film? <laughs> well, uh, you know, Rebel Without a Course. There you go. I finally what, watched what it. What would happen is to see what would have happened. I, we talked about this years ago, um, my manager and I, what would have happened if that car hadn't crashed, if he hadn't been killed? It was only 20 three or something. Mm. And I said, well, we, we can make a story about that and the car not actually hitting. And he survived, but he was a little crippled, but you know, and then he grew to be me, you know, older. Yeah. And, uh, so I think Rebel Without a Cause is one and, uh, or oh, definitely. Cause yeah. I, I just love that movie. God knows what. And I'd never watched it. And I finally watched it about a year ago. Finally. Yeah. Good film. Good. Well yeah. done. Well yeah. done. He was just a bloody kid. It's just amazing. What? Well, and he only made like uh, three movies. Yeah. And then he was dead. He did yeah. a lot of TV stuff. Yeah. You know, maybe sometime if you would be willing, uh, a lot of times we'll talk about different things. You know, this is music. Go Game Go is about video games and nostalgia. We do movie nights a lot of times. Hmm. Maybe if you wouldn't mind, we could have a James Dean night. We could talk about that. Yeah, if you like. Yeah. If, sure. you, if you'd be up for that, that yeah. would be great. I'd love to have yeah. you back on and do that. We're going to do a, yeah. I'm going to do an Elvis show here in a few weeks with another friend of mine. Uh, yeah. And uh, talk about Elvis and we could do a James Dean. That would be really cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be brilliant. All right. Well, here, let's move on. Um, what sparked, okay. So here's, this is, this is my big, I know the story from one side, but I got to know. What is it that made you use any means possible to get out of your hotel room and cut your hair before that rainbow uh, gig? Do you know something? <laughs> I just walked out. I, there was no guard on the door. Nobody said, make sure. I mean, Richard didn't say to anyone, make sure that Graham doesn't get his hair cut. Which is not what he said. Look at this. This is me. Uh, my hair yeah. is, I never had this, this fucking long. Anyway, he, he, he <laughs> so yeah, the story was that he got somebody to stand out my door, so I didn't, yes. go out. I didn't go out a window or anything. We were in uh, Scotland, and I was with my ex-wife, and I said, should we go out into the into the Edinburgh? I think we're in Edinburgh or somewhere. Um, before the gig, you know, so we went out shopping, and I saw a hair cut in place because my hair was getting long, and when, it's, when you have short hair, you have to keep having it cut all the fucking time. Right. Otherwise, it, it looks like this, you know. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, and, uh, I haven't had a cut for fucking months because I ha haven't been bothered or scared of the fucking virus. Um, right. So that's what happened. 
And I went back to the hotel and then uh, to the gig, obviously. And my hair was nice and, you know, ee, nice and, uh, you know, groomed. <laughs> and uh, well, I remember going on stage and uh, Richie, you know, we started the first song. Richie kind of turned me, like, shot. <laughs> you know, what, what's that? It's me. And uh, he went off stage and hid behind, hid behind the amps all fucking night. We never saw him again. Wow. He didn't come play next to me. Nothing. He was hot. And then next day we had a meeting, a band meeting, which was ridiculous. Uh, I remember um, Don Airy coming to my door and said, Oh, great. We've got a, a band meeting with Richie in Richie's room. Oh, okay. Like, said, Yay. And it was about my freaking hair. We walked in. We walked in. Here we walked we in. <laughs> me and, you know, Roger and Cozy Mortensen sat there. I said, uh, What's up, Richie? And Richie goes, It's Graham's hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's my hair. Oh, you know. So it's my hair is to blame. And he said, he had it cut. Well, you know, what, what do you want? Do you want the hair or the boy? What, what, you know, what is right, it? It's, it's he knew very well what I looked like. You know, when I joined the band, I had shorter hair than I did when I was in Rainbow. Really? I, I remember going to the audition with a fucking suit on for Rainbow. Because I wasn't quite sure what Rainbow was. Because uh -huh. I was having a tough time trying to find a photo. The only photo of you with longer hair is the marbles yeah. time. Yeah. That's I, I'm like, I, wait a minute. When did he ever have long hair? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I think I had long hair until I was about 20, 22 or three, something like that. Yeah. And um, I, I had offers to do the James Dean story, believe it or not, uh, by a oh. company. Yeah. And, but it's been done a million times, uh, you know, and I'm old now, it's too late now. Isn't it? Uh, but well, uh, do the old one if you did. The, well, that's if, what I mean. If you do that, what if movie? Yeah, what if? And you know, what might have been amazing if you know if the guy had lived. You know, yeah. he died at twenty, whatever he was, twenty three, I think. Yeah. Uh, but um, what were you saying? I'm sorry, I lost the question. No, that's no. It was just a matter of that story about the hair because I just watched it recently, and it was funny because I could see the. The in and I shouldn't do this. I really I shouldn't be a dick, but I'm just gonna say it. It looked like the interviewer was getting like, okay, let's get to the end of the story. Cause he <laughs> he's like, because his hair it just was too it was too it was it wasn't right. So it didn't want to, you know, and he's and he's like, Yes, we've reiterated this. Can we just move on? <laughs> yeah. You know, I get it, it was wrong, you didn't like it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> that's just the way it felt. <laughs> When you were watching the interview, my last question of the uh, of the round li lightning round is: Hey, when you're on the road, what's your favorite snack? Um, <laughs> probably potato chips. Uh, Do you salt have a brand? Salt and vinegar. Salt. Oh, you like a salt and vinegar chip? Salt and vinegar. Yeah, that, they, they didn't have it in this country for years, and I yes, always get right. salt and vinegar when I lived in England. Yeah. But uh, salt and vinegar has been out for about probably 10 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite. I think just, so. Yeah. Just that's saw some favorite. the other day. And, uh, oh, pistachio. Bags of pistachio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now I know what to send you. Sorry? <laughs> now, now I know what to send you for a thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I've run out of pistachio now. I just pulled Bethany when she came in. She's ordering more because we usually get the great big bag. Yeah. It's really mm -hmm. from Costco, really pretty cheap because yeah. they were pretty expensive. What an yeah. exciting story! Well, hey, <laughs> that's why this is music and the human experience. It's about yeah, yeah, you. People don't know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not just about the music. It's it's about you. That's. I'd like to you. ask you, Graham, on a professional singing level. Yeah. What do you do to really try to take care of your voice? I mean, you said you don't do warm ups before shows. No. What do you avoid? What do you make sure you do for yourself to just try well, and keep it running the way you want it to run? I don't know. Recently, my voice has been the same as it was when I was 30. I don't know what it is, but I've been very lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was told off about drinking coffee by my doctor, he said, don't do that. That's the worst really? thing you can do. You'll get acid and, and you know, all this. Mm. And uh, so I drink pots of coffee now <laughs> just, just to prove him wrong. Yeah, usually a warm drink like that at coffee or tea makes yeah, it yeah. really so sing it's, well. It's, you know? Yeah, exactly. Don't drink liquor. Don't drink hard liquor. Yeah, I found that, that out the hard way. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, but I had a very scratchy throat about um, shit probably ten years ago, and uh, I went to my throat guy and I said, "There's something, you know, tickling down here in my throat." And he said, "Let me see." So I stuffed the camera up my nose like they do, and looked at my uh, vocal cords. And he said, "Look, you got it. It's all scratched. It's like you're taking a beating because you said you're not 21 anymore, and you had a few years of." Right, right, yeah. Said, yeah. And so he said, let me see what I can do. He said, I, I can fix that. So what happened was I went in hospital for, uh, you know, one morning, came out in the afternoon, and he put um, a cortisone into the vocal cord that had gone flat. You know, because the vocal was like a little balloon. You know, right, yeah. And it, it was completely flat. So that was a long time ago, and now it's uh, I, better than ever. You know, wow. so my voice sounds, to me anyway, it sounds pretty much like it. I sounded when I was thirty. Oh, the recent tour videos I've seen of you, you sound phenomenal. I mean, oh. every bit as good as you do in the studio, if not better, on some things, and uh, oh. and that's so hard to do, especially with this powerful yeah. voice you have. I'm a I'm a loud singer too, yeah. and uh, I've always had yeah. you know issues with sound men putting my gain up too high and then they got back everything off and they started yeah, yeah. This thing. and one thing i always do with sound checks is i sing i don't give them one two three four that's bullshit i sing because yeah, I, they need to hear what i'm going to be doing that night yeah and yeah. i get a lot of appreciation from sound guys about that too it really helps yeah. them dial oh, yeah, you absolutely. in and but you know i found out the hard way about alcohol and how that can really deteriorate what's going because it dries up everything in your voice Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah, one night I was playing a gig and out 200 miles out of town with a local band that I had here, and I lost my voice second song of the night. Fortunately, we had a girl in the band that sang some lead, and she ended up covering the rest of the night, but I couldn't get a note out of me. It was a whisper. And really? I went and saw uh, an ENT guy who was a big shot in town. He, he actually co-wrote the textbooks for one of the universities here in St. Louis, teaching yeah. that stuff. He looked to my throat, and he asked me what I did, and I said, well, I work a day job. It's pretty sedentary i'm a yeah, graphic um, designer but i, I play say, a lot of nights a week not enough yeah. monitor loud stuff high-end stuff i've got yeah. a very high range yeah and and he said he said well you don't have nodes yet but you have the biggest calluses i have ever seen on a set of vocal cords the next step is nodes, and then you yeah. lose your voice Hi, Daphne. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, he had me quit doing what I was doing for voices. I'm not saying yeah. you have to quit singing altogether, but stop. And he gave me these concentrated guafenicin capsules, you know, like they put in the expectorants and stuff to do, make your juices yeah. go nuts. And I, I right. crooned with a lounge band for almost a year and uh, doing yeah. you know, Sinatra and Neil Diamond and things like that. I had all this hair and this big beard yeah. and used to freak people out when I'd walk front for me. And the guys in my bands would come out and hear me play and they'd just laugh their asses off because it was the complete antithesis of what we did, you know? Because <laughs> I was yeah. doing stuff like you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, trying to take care of it and keep it on the upswing all the time is always a battle. You know, I really have it, to it watch is. it, and especially with the sinus um, problems and allergies I have here. Correct. Well. It's... um. I, I would say to any guitar player, you know what's the hardest instrument to play? This fucking thing. That it really is. Yeah, exactly. Because you can't, you can't go, you know, you can't show up with anything. When you're up there and singing, nobody sees what goes on inside your body, you know. Yeah. And you come on stage, your bum hurts, you know, the back of your legs and here. <laughs> because you use muscles, you don't realize you're fucking using Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Absolutely. It's, it's tiring. So, you know, but it is, it's I always, I've always said that. And it really is because I try to look after it, but I don't really, mm. which is a, a bad thing. Well, yeah. you're I getting away with it so far. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? I said you're getting away with it so far. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been singing today, you know, and I'm going like, fucking hell, where did that come from? And I don't get um, sort of tired like I used to because that thing on my uh, vocal cord, that was worrying me out. So, you know, I was having to yeah. really push it hard. But um, you now uh, that's what she said. No, not me. Uh, <laughs> no, I went into another world. <laughs> We're waiting for one of those head happens sooner or later. But that's what she said. Go my fucking head. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I was actually in the in the fucking house recording vocals. Yeah, I did a lot of harmony today. We did uh, got about 18 voices or something. But it, you know, nice. it always works out in the end to sound good. You know, wow. you're stacking harmonies. I love that. Yeah. But uh, anyway. 
What, we got some uh, we got some folks that are chiming in. We have Sam Retro Gaming is saying sup guys, and yeah. our good buddy Dan Hurley is saying hello to you. And oh, hi, uh, Dan. this is one of my favorite guests every week. Born distracted. Were the Bee Gees like divas in the studio? Hey, <laughs> they're like Jesus. You asked me. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, they were checking to see oh. if the Bee Gees were like divas in the studio. Yeah, I mean, uh, sort of. I mean, because my cousin Trevor was in the Bee Gees when he was a kid, mm. it was kind of a, a nice introduction. It felt like a family pretty much straight away. So yeah. whenever they recorded which ever album you want to talk about, I would be there and Trevor would be there. Then they'd invite us down and we'd go and watch them record. And then oh, uh, they would say, okay, we've got a bit of time left over. You and Trevor go do something. And so we'd have our guitars, start a track, and then add all the orchestra and whatever later. But, uh, but we, that's how we worked together. And Barry always worked with me constantly. But later on, Morris uh, did, did. Wow. So, oh, great. Thank you, Barry. I'll tell you what, some of my, uh, one of my favorite lightning round questions is, uh, it has been in the past, uh, uh, what album, what band and what album would you have liked to have been a fly on the wall in the studio? And and with you, what you just mentioned, I would love to have been a fly on the wall on that main course album recording. Yeah, I love I love main course by the Bee Gees. That's such a great record. Well, I was no, I wasn't there, was I? No, I wasn't. But who would <laughs> I love yet? Yeah, fly on the wall. Um, probably the Beatles. You know, yeah. Really, to really see. How George Martin worked with them. I, I yeah, did it exactly. with George Martin. He was, yeah, the production and all that shit. I mean, he was the fifth guy. He was a fifth Beatle, yeah. as everybody says. And uh, I was lucky enough to do a Beatle show here with uh, Brad Delp, you know, from uh, Boston. And uh, oh, God, who else? Uh, a whole bunch of people. And um, we all did, uh, I did Oh Darling, Oh Darling, you know that song. Uh, mm -hmm. Brad did. Um, God, he did a couple, I can't remember. But we all did the harmonies exactly the same as they did. And the guitars were tuned exactly. They're playing in the same position that George or John would play. So it sounded fucking, it sounded very close. It was really was magical. Cool. That was one of the best things I've ever done once. And anyway, George Martin was there and he gave his uh, seminar sort of thing about how they recorded. And there's you know, screens up the whole bit. And he would talk for about you know 45 minutes and explain the Beatles recording. And it just was like, fuck, it's just amazing because equipment back then wasn't that fabulous. You know? Oh yeah, no. compared to now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I Am The Walrus or something and Strawberry Fields. Those songs are so it's trippy, you know? Yeah. Wow. yeah. How do they do that? And uh, George said yeah. that in, I think it was I Am The Walrus, he said some of it was in different keys. So we had to kind of slow the tape down or whatever. And when the way we, I don't know, the way we used to slow, slow tape down was putting mm. our hands on the wheel, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get a higher note, well, I can't get that D today. Can make it yeah, exactly slow the tape yeah. up just a bit. Uh, anyway, that, that's how we used to do things sometimes. Yeah. It was so so funny when you think about it. But it's, it's not that long ago, but it is. I mean, things now are so amazing. What you can do mm -hmm. with people who can't even bloody say at all. You know. Oh well, yeah, yeah. There's there is that. Hello, so. Bethany. There goes Bethany, and there goes Layla. Layla and Bethany. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, I, that as I said, that thing that happened to me when I couldn't sing for a year was yeah. just in here, and a lot of it is I still get that a bit. You know, like you know, when, when we're on stage we're live, I get that nervous thing. But if you don't. Then you just think you missed a hit. I'm perfect. You know, I can't. I can't fuck up. It's impossible. But you can always fuck up. Well, you know, you, know, you mentioned uh, that that happened to you in the mid '70s. You know, yeah. not not long after that, we all, uh, you know, well, a geek like me knows that that very same thing happened, maybe in a different for a different mental reason, but for the same thing, it was a mental thing to meet Loaf. Yeah, I it did. Mean, yeah, you know. He went to yeah. do that second meatloaf, that next meatloaf album uh, after Bad Out of Hell to do Bad Out of Hell too, and yeah, people were telling him was, he's a superstar, and he goes, "I don't want to be a superstar. Don't call me a superstar." He got in the in the studio. Todd Rundgren is ready to go. You got Jim Steinman with all the songs. Yeah, and he couldn't do it. He had, it, what you were describing. I love that you had a chance to tell people that because yeah, and to tell us that tonight because 
that's that's an interesting fact. I mean, that red light syndrome. You've yeah. heard of that, right? And I mean, every, there was another. Uh, I think it was uh, not uh, maybe Wilson Pickett or somebody. One of those soul singers from the sixties. Yeah. Like, same kind of thing. It's like I can't sing. Uh, you know, but you can talk. Oh, God, now, then the speaking voice would go. You know, but it, but it is a it's horrible having to go through that. And uh, in fact, we were going to have um, Meatloaf's manager be our manager at one point. And she said he, he was having a problem in his mind about his vocals, you know, and this is a few years ago. But um, it does happen. Yeah. It's a yeah. real thing because you can't just pick it up and turn up to 10, you know? Yeah. If only we could. Hey, you know, some porn stars can't get it up when they need to, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being... <laughs> are you why aren't we being slashed what is going on here now the, now the bottle of wine's come out oh bloody hell nice there you go I've got three women at the end of the, the bench here <laughs> now i'm flashing you that's good <laughs> now I'm, hey let I'm me really ask you dead. graham yeah who are some singers that you really admire either from the old days or now yeah, um, Christ. Well, my first, the first thing I am, I was Paul, Paul Anker. Oh, then yeah. uh, I got to uh, Little Richard. Little Richard. Um, oh, God. Uh, Buddy Holly. Not because he had a great voice, but the songs. He knew how to put them together. Yeah. Yeah. It was magical. I, I don't know what it is, but he's timeless. You, you hear lots of commercials now with his music on it, you know. Which is amazing. I mean, I wonder what he he be doing now too. I'm in touch with his uh, sister, and uh, you know, really? write to her sometimes. Um, yeah, uh, who else? <laughs> well, obviously later on the Beatles. Yeah. The Beatles, because you suddenly realise you didn't have to have a great voice to make great records, and they had good voices, but they weren't, you know, Mario Lanza or fucking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. You know who I was happy to hear, uh, because I have to admit, uh, if there's one thing I will be, it's honest, because I've known your career through all the different bands you've been in, Yeah, but I was not aware of your uh, solo stuff, especially from 77, 78, yeah. but I'll tell you what, I listened to it yesterday, I listened to uh, oh. the first three records, yeah. And your cover of Al Green is oh. kick ass. Tired of being alone. Tired of being alone, brother. Yeah. That was that song came to to me recently when I saw the movie Chef, and yeah, I've heard yeah. it before growing up. But when uh, John Favreau did that movie Chef, there's a scene where he and his son are walking, and there's a marionette guy doing a thing with a like a with a skeleton, and he's. Yeah. And he's acting like he's singing along to that song. All right. I'm like, I love that song. It was so well placed in that movie. And when I heard you on that first record singing that, I loved it. The arrangement. Who worked the arrangement on that? That's uh, that'd be uh, Pip Williams. Oh, good God. That was beautiful. Williams. He used to work with uh, you know the band Sweet. Yes. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, who else did he work with? Oh, uh, Colin Blundstone. Okay. He worked with some really good people. And was sweet. Uh, that's Pip Williams playing all the guitars on there, by the way. And <laughs> but um, he's like uh, he's a professor now, professor really? of whatever. So he, he teaches or goes and does seminars or whatever the hell he does. So he's a guitar player and very good. He played on one of my records on, wow. on my album. In fact, those albums you're talking about, uh, Pip is playing guitar along with mm -hmm. Mickey Moody and other people. Well, if there's one thing I can say, it's for everybody to make sure that you get out there and really listen to these these uh, solo records from the uh, mid and late from well from the they're all from kind of the late seventies right yeah. before you joined Rainbow hmm. um, because they are very I'm mean, not like there's a big surprise I'm just saying I'm going to start a segment on my show that's going to be talking about albums that I didn't. Uh, have contact with yeah uh through my years of loving music until recently and and how i'm so enjoying them i i yeah. there wasn't a clunker in the bunch i'll say it like i <laughs> that's what i usually say the whole album was totally enjoyable i wasn't ever like filler oh okay it wasn't like yeah. that at all i just thoroughly really uh oh, really great. enjoyed them what happened with stars like that too to me that was the same thing with the band stars oh really 
didn't well, what, grow up with it. We, we thought of every track being a single. Okay, th is this going to be a single? Uh, yeah. That's the way we thought back then, you know. And uh, why not? You know, yeah. and that's what I'm trying to. Well, that's what we're doing now. We want every track on this album with the Graham Bonnet band thing. We want this to sound like what the fuck is that? You know, something that blows you away if we can. You know, well, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to do that these days. But I mean, you know. Well, and I think there's a lot of bands that are doing that. Yeah. Um, it's just I think the climate in uh, society is is a little askew uh, yeah. sometimes because there's times when I listen to things and they're by good friends of mine, and I'm like, mm, yeah, okay, but then there's other things and I'm like, oh yeah, right yeah. there, and it's whether or not the corporations, if we could shove them aside, and get that bullshit out of the way yeah. and have radio stations yeah. that have a voice, not just radio stations. We all know there's tons of radio stations, yeah, especially internet radio stations. Mm -hmm. And if we can just get them to push the bullshit away and have one of those really be a strong station, yeah. uh, you know, and those start cropping up. Yeah. I, I don't call it the the music industry anymore. I, see if you agree with me on this, Graham. It, no. I now call it the industry of music. The industry is really because you guys work your ass off. Love music, hate the business because yeah. it's so fucking fucked up now. Every you know rap and all this crap that's coming out. You know all you know auto tuned and gone. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> You know, yes. all that, I'm going, what the fuck is that? And then you go, I tell you what really blew me away um, was after a gig in um, London, I think it was, a couple of years ago, uh, we finished about, uh, I don't know, say 12 o'clock, midnight. Hmm. And we came out and we had a very small audience, like, I don't know, 50 people. It was sure. a, club, a rock club, you know, mm -hmm. coming out, so we're going out, getting the stuff away. And there was a line around the block. I said, what the hell's going on here? And it's all these very young kids, I imagine, 16, 17-year-old kids, all dressed very scantily, the women. And uh, I, I found it, it's a disco. And there's some guy standing up there going, whoop, whoop, whoop. no, you know what I mean. And those yeah. guys get paid fucking amazing money for standing on a stage who know nothing about music, but know how to fuck around with the electronics. Yeah. <laughs> right. Get out of here, you know. Um, well, uh, what's that? Yeah, my thing has always been if you can't sing, stay away from the microphone. You know, don't try to make something that you think is, is music. Yeah. That isn't. It makes me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem with people yeah. who do that. Yeah. I'll just give it there. Yeah. Um, now, here's a this is this uh, in my uh, post for this show, <laughs> I mentioned that I have a number one question that I have been so eager and this would be a good time for me to also say thank you for being on the show tonight i i, I don't know if i've had a chance to say that yet i'm honored to have you on the show and okay. one of the thank things you. that well and one of the things that really makes me happy is uh, after all these years of being uh, a music head and now a musician there's certain things that i've always wondered and because i've followed you through all these different bands and throughout your career the one thing is one of my favorite songwriters is Russ Ballard. And of course you have a long standing relationship with the song since you've been gone. And what is it that brought you to that? And what makes that such a gem in your collection throughout your career? Well, since you've been gone. Yeah. Well, you know something that almost wasn't recorded. No, uh, when I went to, uh, uh, you know, uh, rehearse whatever for the Rainbow album I, I did. Uh, yeah. They left this song till last. And I said, what's this song? They said, it's a song called Since You've Been Gone. And they played me, uh, Cozy did, you had it on a tape machine. A tape machine. <laughs> uh, I remember it. Um, and uh, he put on this tape machine. He had a bunch of songs. And he played the Since You've Been Gone track he was talking about. And it was by a band called Clout, a girl band. And it, I said, well, you want to do that? I said, that, that's not Rainbow, is it? You know, it's not Rainbow. But the manager was, at, uh, Bruce Payne, the manager of the band, was, you know, adamant that we did this freaking song to be uh, radio, fr radio friendly. Because yeah. Rainbow was never played on the radio. That's why I didn't know who the hell they were when I went over to audition. I had no idea. 
I thought it was a folk band. Rainbow. I'm there. Don't be, you know. <laughs> I can, well, it, it sounds like that, though, doesn't it? I get it. I get it. Um, Rainbow. You know, a bunch of hippies and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, come floating on long dresses and whatever. But, um, <laughs> but we heard this track. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> look at going, we are going to do this, all right? And it said, yeah, because uh, the manager thought we could make a hit out of it. So we, the demo was like, um, since you've been going, since you've been going, you know, yeah. it's very, da -da 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 -da. You know, so, so instead, instead of doing that, we just changed it a little bit. Whoa, 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 da -da 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 -da. you know, just changed it a little bit. And that, with Richie's heavyish guitar behind it. Right. And uh, we did it. And he came in, the manager came into the studio and said, that's it, I'm telling you. And it was played everywhere, every fucking way, you know. And none of us could believe it, you know. And so, well, thanks to uh, Russ Ballard again. And yeah. I was going to get something for the album we're doing right now from Russ, but he said, I don't have anything right now. He's been out on the road a bit, been doing stuff. But uh, there's a chance that maybe on the, a, la a later album I'll do something. But I've had his, a song of his on everything I've done, just about, with the Graham Bonnet band, etc. Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got some great songs through the years. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it's funny that you mention it almost not being recorded because that's the way New York Groove was for yeah. Ace Fraley. He yeah. they brought it to him. He's like, "What the hell is this?" Well, the talks he's, like, yeah. Yeah. he's like, "I don't, I don't." And then, I don't think I want to do that. Yeah. And you can be so freaking wrong. Sometimes yeah. you have to listen to other people who see, see the big picture like they say. Right. Yeah. And we, we cool. didn't. I mean, Cozy was like, oh, that fucking saw fucking hell. You know? <laughs> so he just, he just <laughs> matches it out and leaves the room in protest. <laughs> and Cozy, Cozy like, did all of his drum tracks within a week, I think. Oh, he England. It was great. So I'm going now. See ya. <laughs> and he got his in his car, took out a Mars bar, started chewing on it, and started playing the Beach Boys. Oh man! <laughs> God only knows what I'd be. You know, God only knows bursting out. I love that song, and I love oh, David gosh. Bowie's version of that song. It's so good. <laughs> are you are you familiar? Are you familiar with Bowie's version of that? No. no. Oh. Brother, you got to check it out. It's on tonight, which has really? the song Blue Jean on it. Yeah, yeah. That is one brilliant record. If you've never heard Tonight by David Bowie, no shit. It is a brilliant follow up to Let's Dance. Such wow. a good record. And it, it's one of those you're like, okay, it's going to fall off any minute now, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to kind of be like, yeah, maybe not that song, but no. Yeah. It's very emotive all the way from the front to the back. It's got a good feel. And it the way it ends is killer. And oh, and man. his version of God Only Knows, beautiful. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to listen. And Hurley says, Dan says his favorite song is Desert Song with Michael Schenker. Excellent. Who's that? That's our buddy Dan that's on the chat tonight. He said that oh. uh, Desert Song is one of his favorites. Oh, Yeah. Uh, Mine yeah. too, actually. It's one of the Everything on that Schenker album is so well done, man. You're writing. Yeah, great producer, man. That's another thing I want to ask you. Where do you get your inspiration for your lyrical ideas? Because you come up with some uh, deliciously unique stories <laughs> in your lyrics. Well, really um, cool stuff. Yeah, that's me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> deliciously <laughs> unique. <laughs> well, Graham, you're like, so delicious. Who knew? Sounds so romantic <laughs> and fabulous. Um, well, his name well, is Graham, after all. Uh, I'm, I'm just Graham, and I, I'm, I'm a reply. What I do is um, try and find a subject that's real and probably scary, or you know, a mystery about something, or something about a place I've seen, uh, you know, about real things instead of um, you know the sword in the stone and you know dragons right. or you know, you know which everybody does. That's why I can't I can't listen to other so-called heavy bands sometimes because the lyrics are silly. But I tried to, tried to make them about real things. The, one of the tracks I did for uh, Michael Shanker's album about uh, two years ago, even though the title sounds evil and weird, it's called The Beast That Hides in the Shadows. But it's not about what you think it's about. It's actually about Alzheimer's. And, um, mm, um, yeah. and uh, so the, everybody, it was a single. They put it out as a single. I don't know what happened to it. Probably nothing, but everybody says that that song, you know, because I lost my brother to Alzheimer's and my dad, my, dad, my, my mom, brother. 
Yeah, it's my brother died, I think, you know, years ago. So, you know, they're there, but they're not, you know. Right. You know, right. It, and it's, the beast, and what I say in that thing is, um, you know, is it coming for me? Do I have to you know, be very careful because it might get me one day? Mm -hmm. Am I the next one in line? And that's basically what it's about. And, uh, you know, Michael just went, oh my God, you know, so, yeah, I'm very glad to say my my uh, track was chosen off that album to be a single. Yeah. That's great. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's pretty amazing that whole thing. I remember uh, losing my mom, and she had it, and uh, and I remember yeah. soon after that, or uh, or just during that time before we lost her, Dave Mustaine was doing a big campaign for Alzheimer's uh, because his mother was suffering from it too. Yeah. And uh, yeah. and like you said, it that's the way I feel about it too. It, it's yeah. a it's a tough thing. It's almost as if they're imprisoned, yeah, in a shell, and they can't communicate. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. it's. I, I used know. to call it nonsense time that I'd have with my mom. Yeah, well, uh, the last time I saw Tony, my brother, mm -hmm. uh, all of it, Bethany and a couple of the band were in, in the pub in England, mm -hmm. and uh, I sat next to Tony. I said to him. Do you remember Tony when I had that little car that used to do this and do that? I said, I think you took it off of me, you know. I think you've got it. And he said, I, I, I don't have it. I said, I think you do, Tony. And I had my Ray Ban uh, glasses case. Mm -hmm. It was undone. And I gave it to Tony for somebody. I just put it on his on his knee and uh, I, I put my arm around him again. I was talking, just looking across the room, whatever other people. And mm -hmm. there was my brother trying to fasten. This freaking, you know, glasses case. Yeah, yeah. And I thought I should help him. I thought, no, I won't. Mm -mm. And he kept on going. He kept on going. And after about I don't know twenty times, it finally went click. And I said to him, "Thanks, Tony." Yeah. I needed that guy put here. So, but anyway, what about that car? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure he stole some of my bloody toys. I, I, you know, he was my big brother and uh, always will be my big brother. He's still in my mind, he's still in my heart. He's still yeah. here, as far as I yeah. But to, to have him become this guy that couldn't, in the end, couldn't talk. Yeah. And, you know, li living in a place that where people were looking after him. Mm -hmm. And he, he was my age, 73. Mm -hmm. And he died. And yeah. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, my dad, it's it a tough like a, a role reversal with my dad. Suddenly I'm pushing my dad in a stroller, you know, the wheelchair, taking him to the bathroom, which he used to do when I was a little baby. So that right. role reversal is sure. the strangest feeling because suddenly you're looking after a little baby. My dad yeah. was 92, you know, and it, mm -hmm. I cry to think about it now, you know, because right. I love my dad so much and my brother, obviously. They're part of my... Right part of me <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah they're the reason that we're here right now doing this i mean it's Absolutely. you know it brings you together yeah, yeah. with people you have good relationships yeah. and it leads you to other people it leads you to want to know other yeah. people you know yeah. I, I i played uh i started playing bass because i i started with a church down the road the the leadership has changed there and the the new pastor yeah. wanted to get a hold of me i'm sure he wanted to know if i wanted to maybe do the band but i yeah. I wasn't really interested in doing that, but I wanted to meet him anyway because it's about people. It's about absolutely. You know, my friend Toby Jepson mentioned that recently. He's like, I read a book that says your answer should be yes. If it's something, <laughs> yeah. if it, you know, if you have a friend that calls you, says, "Hey, man, do you want to go get a drink?" You know, or or go get a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah yes. right. Yeah. yeah, you know, I know, it's not about um, it's not about saying no. Um, Absolutely, fucking lovely. because yeah. you never know when those people won't be there anymore. And then suddenly That's your right. world is changed, and you were going, where, "Where is everybody? I, I'm in a strange world." Suddenly, you know, yes. we we went to see uh, one of Bethany's old boyfriends. He had mm -hmm. a brain tumor, and uh, he's in the hospital right now, in fact. And um, I, I've never met him before. I was kind of jealous of him because, yeah. mm -hmm. anyway, his head had been cut open and everything. And I met him. His name is Michael, and I I broke into tears when I saw him. He, was hard, he could hardly speak, but then a few days later, he, he was up again, you know, but I gave him a hug and I gave him a kiss behind my, I was wearing the mask, I gave yeah. him, I've never yeah. before, but I, I I felt so like, why didn't I do this a long time ago, when, mm -hmm. when she told me about this guy she used to go out with, 
I sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't want to do that. But when this happened, I, we both said, we've got to go see him. And I wouldn't have done that a few years ago if you had a brain tumor. And I would not have done it. But now, as you say, you've got to communicate with people. You have to yeah. realize we're all, all one piece of mud or whatever. Right. Or one piece of mud. Right. And it's like I say, everything happens for a reason, in my it's belief. Yeah. yeah. And everything happens when it should. Yeah. So we can live with regret, but why? Just know that yeah. when it does happen, like you just imparted to us about that story, yeah. it just happened when it was supposed to happen. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, I should have, I could have. Just that you did is a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, and, and it um, makes you, it, you feel good. You know? I would never, when I went there, I, I just thought I, I'm never going to you know, ignore anyone again because mm. it's so important that we, our lives are so fucking short. Damn straight. I don't want to argue with anybody. You know, I don't want any of that shit. I, I don't like it at all. No arguing, no confrontation, even though we have some. Sure, right. right. That's, that's, a, that's a, you know, it's another story. But yeah. anyway. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks for telling me about that Russ Ballard tune. I mean, I, I you know, yeah. uh, that was... I love the song and it, you know, I have it on it. I have it on the Impelitary record. My other question about it though, my only other question about that song is, did you ever do that with Schenker at all? Uh, no, because we, we never played because of that's my, what I was, that's what I was I thinking. Was that night. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I thought, wait, no, yeah. was, did that end that quickly? Did, I mean, that was rehearsed a song called night games though, which is one of my solo things. Yes, you know exactly. Great. Yeah. Great song. I was playing on him. Uh, John Lord and yeah. Don Henry, everybody. And uh, that was a kind of a hit for me in England and Europe, but never here. My stuff never used to get released here. I don't know why. And, and I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, I'm listening to these albums these last two days, and I'm like, what is going on here? Because yeah. these are brilliant records, and I, I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, hope, I hope anybody who hears ends up going and checking these albums out understands yeah. that and feels the same as I do because I'm picky and I'm like, yeah. these albums are great. Yeah, I'm even picky. Great songs. <laughs> I mean, that's a great oh, songwriters yeah. and all that stuff. Great production, Pitt Williams again, as I was saying. And uh, just, they're just good. Yeah, I got the job from, uh, I got the job in Rainbow from a track on uh, my first, the white, there's a white album. Yeah. And uh, When He Still Love Me Tomorrow is on that, you know, that's yes. my version of that. Yes. And Richie loved it, and he said, "Get in touch with this guy. Where is he? You know." Yeah. And so that's how I kind of got the job. And wow. I remember we had a party one day uh, at Richie's house, and he kept playing it over and over again. I said, what the fuck is he doing? You know. And Roger, Roger Glover says, "He gets like it." <laughs> I, I think myself, I did a pretty good job too. I, As you, you covered I, the Righteous I, Brothers too, right? And uh, Tartly and Alone. Yeah. That's my kind of. That's where I love. That sits really well with me, that kind yeah. of music. I mean, yeah, I was, yeah. all the other stuff. Yeah, that, that stuff. I can go back and just, you know, just groove along, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was telling but guys. Said, I think he's, 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 all fucking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is okay with me. Because <laughs> I was telling Guy earlier, I said, and I think he's a real fan of that, that cool 60s vibe in there. Because yeah. on all the things I've been listening to, I keep... There's other ones that keep popping up, you know, that the be my yeah. baby and uh, you know, yeah. and that stuff. Russ Ballard was playing on that, by the way. Russ Ballard came really? on to the studio one afternoon. Uh, wow. Again, we're in London recording, yeah. and uh, yeah. we were just sitting around doing nothing. And uh, Russ comes in. He says, "Did you do my track yet?" Which was another song. And he <laughs> said, uh, "He said, you know what you should do, Graham." He said, "You know, really suit your voice." I said, "What?" what, what? They said, "Be my fucking baby." <laughs> he said, come in, mate. Went downstairs to the studio and he starts playing on the piano. So he's playing piano on that. And he was, it was fun. It was great. We had it done in like two or three takes. Well, it was, it was certainly much more peaceful than being in Phil Spector's place trying to record oh, bloody that. Bloody right? hell, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I can't believe that's, I don't know if he actually did that, you know. There's a lot of uh, doubt about his, uh, you know, uh, guilt or innocence, you know. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah we, well, I, people who know him. Right. Know him as well. I, I, uh, I was watching something recently with somebody. Uh, dang it. I can't remember who it was that worked with him. And he's like, he basically, we were like, 
prisoners in the house. Yeah. And we weren't, was, it was like very weird. Yeah, that'd be a lot of the girl groups he helped. Mm -hmm. You know, like the trios of girls, the Ronettes and whatever of else. His yeah. wife, yeah, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly, Ronnie Spector. So, yeah. you know, he did keep them, uh, like you're saying, almost in prison. And you've yeah. got to do this, you've got to do that. No, 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 don't do that. Okay, sing now, don't sing now. Well, well, well that's wrong. Um, and then, uh, you know, they have to look a certain way. And mm -hmm. after they were done with, not the Supremes, I didn't do the Supremes, but the other, those other girl bands like Shirelles and, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean, those, that, that yep. era, he, they yep. just disappeared into nowhere. He made the money off of them. And then they yeah. were gone. Some of those girls couldn't really sing that great, but he knew what to do. He did a lot of double tracking, et cetera, et cetera. You know, yeah. he wasn't silly. So those records they made sound pretty cool. You know, even though they were little school, they were school kids, some of those people. Yeah. You know, yeah. 18, 19 years old, whatever. Yes. But um, they, never, they unfortunately went down the shitter after yeah. that little bit of fame was done with. Yeah, that's really sad. It's it's awful. True. And that, that's how I felt about me and my cousin. You know, when we did that album, uh, I thought, why isn't it being released like everywhere? And it, it wasn't. All the singles. And yeah. it was, I said, Trevor, we should be in America now doing TV like Peter and fucking Gordon. And whoever else, you know, yeah, because it was that era when the the British invasion, so to speak, mm -hmm. the Bee Gees, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, you know, the Hollies, uh, fuck. Um, oh yeah, you know, all, all those guys. Yeah, we didn't get a look in, and I, I've got a feeling it was something to do with um, a bit of, I don't know, some inside inside politics going on at the office, at Robert Stigwood's office, and I don't know what it is exactly, but there's something weird about it. Because that should have been out in, in this country, no doubt. Because I yeah. play it. We play that song yeah. now. Really? That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> hey, you That's got one of those. Too. Like you, your cat just went across the screen, Stuart. <laughs> I didn't know my cat was at your house. How the hell did he do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's, what's your cat's name? Uh, there's two cats. We've got one. It's uh, actually Bethany's cat. One is called Rex, and the other one's called Gumbo. Rex Gumbo. is really Gumbo. <laughs> and he's a, this this one had just walked in front of me. Yeah. He's not very old, he's just a couple of months old. And we oh, found wow. him inside the chassis of uh, Bethany's car. Wow. And he was a little tiny kitten like this. But now he's like this and like this. He's like a freaking barrel. And now he's yeah, eating yeah. my little cat. He won't stop eating. So the other cat is not very well. He's a bit sick. He has cancer. Oh, shoot. So wow. he has no teeth. And so I feed him sometimes with a spoon. So he's really thin and he's looking at the other cat right now, watch, watching him eat his food. Rexy, <laughs> oh, he, he won't do anything because he knows it'll end in a fight. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah, young punks. But anyway, I, 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 I digress. <laughs> well, hey, what was it like when you were, uh, so you, you did a, the, a couple of solo records. Then yeah. just uh, what I would like to get to is like, what was your, and we're going to move through. We're going to get into these other bands now too. But um, the first off, you got into Rainbow. What was your what was your feeling? Where were you mentally when you were coming from a solo career and um, and then going getting ready to do a band? How did you feel about that? Well, I've never been in a band. Uh, right, since I was like a kid at school. You know, right, the band at the end of the street. You know, we used to play pubs in my hometown. And, uh, and what was the name? Of, what was the name of that band? Oh, they were called the Graham Bonnet Set. <laughs> Graham Bonnet Set. S E T. Yeah. So we we played uh, you know around you know Leicester, Sheffield, and all all those kind of places, and uh, we didn't get very far with it, but we did it because it was fun. So we yeah. played caravan parks and things like that. But you know, um, after doing being in the Marbles, we played. Me and Trevor, I think we only played three gigs with the Marbles, My because God. there wasn't that much interest. But <laughs> <laughs> you some cat blocked. Mine, mine, mine does exactly the same thing. Mine will do that. It's it's some it's some domination, or it's just yeah. uh, I love you, man. Right, and it's like I love you. That's how they behaved on the planet from where they came. You know, that's, yeah. That's, they are not camera shy. I do have one that's just like that. I call him. That, he looks just like that. Was well, a red cat, is he? 
Yeah, and his name is Mal. I call him Punky. Oh, I yeah. Call him sniper because he attacks me. Some people call him <laughs> Satan. Um, but they're gorgeous. It's a beautiful it, cat. I'm not a cat fan. I mean, I like dogs. <laughs> I'm more of a dog person. But because I used to be allergic to cats until I had like some shots a few years ago. Oh, okay. But, uh, my allergies are terrible. I couldn't get anywhere near a cat. Right. Couldn't go into a house with someone that had a cat. I remember going, we had a. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to be on the show one way or the other. I love it. Yeah, little bugger. If I call, I bet if I called Kitty, I know my my dog would probably show up. But yeah, <laughs> Daphne came in here a little while ago to say hi to me. Oh, did she? Yeah, she was very quiet. If she I say Kitty, 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 oh, Kitty, hey. oh, here he comes. Can you grab him? <laughs> Come here, Bunky. Can you grab the cat? He's going all over the. Fucking place. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Who oh, well. else? And uh, I think uh, Rex should do it another thing and just wipe his mouth. There you go. Yeah. Right, which one should I get first? Oh, look, he's got a red. What? He's got what? Stu. He's got a red, a ready, a red Oh, hair. you got a red boy too? We have two. Yeah, look at this. This is Punky. Oh, so, wait, what's his name? Punky. Punky. I call oh, him Punky. His, his real name is Mal. Mal, he's so cute. Isn't wait, he? this is Gumbo. Oh, look at this. This is killer. Wait, wait, where's, the, where's the camera? There he is. Can you yeah. see? Hi, Gumbo. Say hi, Gumbo. Say what's up, Gumbo. Say I'm Punky. Uh, so, <laughs> and he's not happy. How old's Punky? Punky is, uh, he's like seven or eight. Awesome. Oh, Aren't yeah. the red ones the best? Yeah, I love him. I, he's a dick, but I love him. Oh, yeah. That's all I ever get are red cats. So we um, have two right now. I just did it. What? No food. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Rex, Rex isn't going to be him. with us much longer. Take him with you. I can only do one thing at a time, sweetie. But they'll keep him out of his food. <laughs> the, the, the cat, the young cat, steals the old cat's food. Oh, they, the yeah. Food well, why don't I just feed them both and then it'll be a done deal? Well, I'll do, yeah, okay. They are, they are animals, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, they're bloody animals. They are. I hate them, you know. Okay, yeah. who wants to feed who wants fish? Yeah. So, fish? Okay, yeah. So, if, so then you, well, uh, so uh, we were just talking about getting into a band and, and then yeah. oh. how was yeah, the, was, well then what was your feeling transitioning from rainbow yeah. to, Oh, uh, you and, and this is something else I wanted to oh. mention too. You mentioned that you talked to Dio. Did you talk to Dio yeah. at that time when he was exiting? Because yeah. he was going to get ready to do another, he was getting ready to do a huge thing, just like you were getting ready to do a huge yeah. thing. Yeah. You're coming into rainbow Dio's leaving. Dio's leaving. Going to Sabbath. Yeah. So I this know. is your crazy days for you two. Did you did you talk during that time? Um, not much. Okay. But, uh, I used to rehearse um, when the Alcatraz thing. Wait a minute. Where were we? Thing. Uh, he had a studio, uh, a rehearsal studio with Wendy, Wendy Dio. Yeah. And we used to rehearse it. Uh, so I barely didn't see him very much, but we did a few interviews together. You know, with magazines and the two guys look at the magazine, and, uh, you know, pointing at pictures. And uh, I, I went to see his show on his last show when he had the big castle thing and all that, the dragon. Oh, yeah. uh, I saw that, and that was the last time. Yeah, that, that was the dragon, actually. Yeah, I guess that was the uh, the dragon. Um, yeah, the, you know, all the. Yeah, he had the. I can't think of the name of the album. Uh, I can't anyway. But you know what I mean. I do. I, I know exactly. Like, I like call him. And I, that's I heard okay. Cool. From different people, how ill he was, and I couldn't believe it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember seeing him at the Nam show, uh, yeah. probably two thousand eight, um, and uh, just he was. I didn't get to talk to him, but it, you know, he seemed really cool with everybody and and stuff. Um, I, I just trying to. I'm checking out this uh, thing. Then. What about, I mean, it just kills me how many awesome guitar players you've been included with in bands. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so you're, you're going from Richie Blackmore, you go to Yngwie Malmsteen. Then, I have a guitar player now called Jeff Loomis. You know who he is? I was oh, yeah. going to mention that. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. That's awesome. So he's, at the moment, we're doing, I'll be doing three albums, come to think about it. But I, we're finishing this album off. Then we're going to the Alcatraz album with yeah. uh, Jeff 
Loomis. And uh, that's going to be, I'm writing those songs as we, as we speak, as well as recording our album. Especially, I'm a bit, I'm a nosy situation like crazy. Uh, sorry. It's the cats. The cats, I know. I was going to say it's the cats. Yeah, so I'm very busy. And then after I've done the Alcatraz album, there's been, we've been talking today to a producer who wants to do a solo album with me, like I did in the past, which yeah. will, you know, uh, we'll have different kinds of music on there instead of all heavy rock or right. There'll be rock on there, obviously, but I mean, sure. you know, some other R and B type things, like saying "Tired of Being Alone," you know, things like that, yeah. songs like that. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, I just wanted to ask too. Uh, I know that you know we've again other interviews and things that I've heard about the stage life with uh, Alcatraz with Ingve. Was there a difference? Because I was listening to No Parole on my way to work and home today. And damn, that's, I mean, I don't have to tell anybody what a great album that is. But oh. uh, but just those moments where you're listening back to something and you're going, damn, that's tight. Yeah. Um, I wondered if the, if the, the feeling was different in the studio than when everything hit the stage live. Um, yeah, yeah it, it was a bit because, you know, we... He was, I don't know, 19 when he joined Correct. the band. And uh, he was a kid who was really hungry and, you know, all set to go. and couldn't wait for it. And then by the time he actually got on stage and his ego got really, really, you know, out of control. Yeah. Because he was doing all these, you know, and you can't compete with that. You know, I'm there singing away. And during, like, the verses or whatever, or choruses, he would stand in front of me and uh -huh. nobody could see me. <laughs> right. He's like six foot two or whatever. And, uh, you know, if you don't do that. When it's your turn, it's your turn. Stage editing, right. you know, solo, guitar solo. You know, okay, now it's me. But he would start whittly whittling through like the verse to whatever, whatever song. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, since you've been gone, I got the same old dream. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, you don't do that. But he didn't do it through that. But he did it through. Um, you know, our songs, the ones we made up. Yeah. Yeah. Hiroshima or whatever. Right. You know, whittling from start to finish. And of course, everybody was looking at him because he's this young kid, tall and whatever, yeah. Swedish. And uh, people were just, you know, oh, what the hell? They couldn't believe what he was doing. Well, when I he, was thinking. Uh, he's oh, yeah. He, yeah. I mean, he is. We were lucky to have him. You know, yeah. right. I don't know where we can. Yeah, no way we Because yeah. he he did Steeler just before that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Ron Keel, my buddy Ron yeah, Keel. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I, we didn't know who he was or anything. But he came along and uh, we spoke to him on the phone. And I said, uh, "I'd like you to rehearse a song for the audition." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Who is this?" I said, it's Graham. So, not Graham Volnit. I said, yeah, yeah, it's me. <laughs> he thought it was a joke. He thought his, his bandmates were having a joke with him. You know, <laughs> uh, gotcha. So he heard me and I said, yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> said, no big deal. It's just Graham. And uh, I said, could you could you rehearse a song um, called SOS, which is oh, a yeah. Russell Ballard song, right? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want him to come in there going, whoo, whoo, you know, doing all this Richie Blackmore thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I want to see what else. I you love can your do. impersonation of Ingve. That's a, that's great. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I do know exactly oh, what yeah. you mean. Yeah. So uh, that's cool. That means you have to play chords and shit. You know. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, really, really well you know what those are, right? These yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember chords. Uh, yeah. So he comes in. It looks like fucking rich with the white boots and the black pants. <laughs> yeah. The whole yep. fucking thing. And yep. um, so we start this song SOS. Uh, it was just amazing. It was just, he brought the bloody thing alive. It was incredible. Wow. You know, I mean, I, I like the version we did in the studio, but, you know, when Ingve played what he played, it was with such power and passion, you know, oh, yeah. and the yeah. soul. I mean, he's a great guitar player. There's no fucking doubt about right. it. Right, right. But um, his personality changed drastically yeah. after, you know, a, a year or so with us. It yeah. was not very horrible. Sure. that's that's like a lot of, you know it's a lot of relationships that we have you know there's um i didn't understand it at first before i was a musician i spoke with bert navera from the knack and uh yeah. and he mentioned how he doesn't he didn't hang out with the band 
after no. the show. He went and did things with friends yeah, and got yeah. fish and everything. And I was very fortunate to do that with him one night uh, yeah. after a gig he did here in St. Louis. But I didn't realize that until I was in a band. And then I was yeah. like, you know, I, I do like these guys. I like hanging out with them. Now, Guy and I, we, we were former neighbors. So yeah. we did hang out. We did. We could talk about certain things. We had a lot in common. We were yeah. friends first before I ever became a musician. Right. But it's true. And you're like, I don't. I don't have to get along with this person anywhere else, you know, and, and I, I've enjoyed reading certain things in interviews where you're like, I learned a lot from that person. It's not a matter of, I'm, I'm never looking for anybody to tell me anybody was a dick or anything yeah. like that. No, and I, I love the positivity and, and uh, Dio does the same. He did the same thing with his interviews yeah. that I see with yours too, where you're like, I learned a lot. And yeah. I'm thankful to have that experience. Well, thank you. Know. you. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we. Uh, no, but I'm. You know, the same as I. When we're finished playing, I like mm. to go back to the freaking hotel because I know we've got a long drive or whatever next day. Yeah. Um, whereas sometimes uh, some <laughs> some people in the band will hang out a bit, you know, drinking or whatever, yeah. and I can't do that. You know, I'm an alcoholic. I can't drink. If I have a drink, like 20, 20 drinks. Wow. So I'm, you know, I'm doing all that, uh, the AA thing, sponsor, blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, I think as I said earlier, when that virus hit everybody, I was like drinking to take away the fear, you know? I was scared to death of dying. Because yeah. I was on my own, completely on my own. Girlfriend, band, all gone. And I'm crawling around the fucking, you know, on the floor in my condo. Wow. To the bathroom for a piss. You know what I mean? That's how bad I was. It felt like someone was pushing me down into the ground. That's wow. depression. You know, but I was yeah. trying to get rid of it by just going to sleep, getting completely shit faced and just going to sleep. Mm. So I'm not there anymore. You know, I could have what, what was that? What was that catalyst? What was the moment? Did you did you go and get seek help yourself or did somebody help you out? Yeah, that, that to me did. My girlfriend. Yeah. Gotcha. And she, at this time, she was uh, not with me. Mm -hmm. but, uh, she got me into AA again. I went away for a month. Mm -hmm. away, uh, a thing, which was horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm a lot better now. Well, thank God. I appreciate yeah. that. I'm, uh, I'm, know, I'm glad. I'm glad. All, I mean, to go to all that shit again. I, I was sober for fucking, geez, 13 years. And then I fell off the wagon because of this fucking virus and band problems. Can you believe that? I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, I oh, I can I can believe it's not it. It's a thing, though, is it? You know, it really isn't. No, but it was a big thing with her. You know, not to have her around was devastating. Yeah. Now, now she's yeah. here and we're kind of happy again. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank her for us. I mean, yeah. I think everybody yes. out there is thankful for. Uh, she for yeah, she when keeps. Those, you didn't yeah. talk to that da, da, da today. You just answer. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh fuck! You missed a meeting today. I did. Oh shit. Okay. But it's yeah. a. You've got to keep at it, and it drives me nuts sometimes because it can be really boring. You know, they go on and on about how awful life has been for them because it fucking well has. You know, and it has for me too. And we all say say the same things. I think. You know, um, what made you drink? How did you stop? Why did you stop? You know. Mm. Uh, but it's interesting, you do hear different stories and you pick up sometimes from other people how they corrected a certain, you know, a certain, yeah, a certain thing, a certain trait in the character that wasn't very good, you know. Right. And, a certain, and then you go, oh, wait a minute, that, I do that too. And that happens once in a while. But most right. of the time, like, hey, man, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I'll look like the drunk again. They're, they're, yeah. so happy. they're all so happy. Yeah. And it's uh, it's kind of fun, but at the same time, you go, oh Christ, when is this going to end? I know, I know. Yeah, you, I'm you, being horrible by saying that. I'm sure they think that too. You know. Yeah, you, you run into that wall where you're you're um, where you realize that some of us think differently. Some of us are yeah. a little more of a realist. Some of us don't have to wear the. <laughs> Yay, yeah all the time and you're like i'm fine i got it i'm fine yeah. i'm just on the i'm a different place with that and yeah uh you know that's kind of the way i got 
I get with different things. You know, I'm like, just, I don't need to be <laughs> up with people all the time. I just, yeah. you know, I, I need to do, but let me tell you one, uh, the one thing I was thinking about <laughs> with this too, is that guy and I played a gig years ago and a woman stepped up on stage, very attractive woman, just came up on stage. She was relatively my age, I would imagine. And she, yeah. she said, um, Hey, can I get a picture like behind the drums or, you know, and I said, well, we'll talk to the drummer. And she was, oh, I could do anything. I could hold a guitar. I, I said, well, sure. And then she tells me that she lost her husband. And this was the first night she'd been out after his passing. And yeah. she was with her daughter and son-in-law and they were going to take a picture of her. And I said, that's fine. And we just talked for a minute. And, hmm. and I told her the one thing that I could say to her is that you know what it's not always necessarily because she's like i'm mad at god i'm mad i'm just mad and i go i get it and that's okay and, yeah. and you may not understand it but and it may not be something's going to come along and you're going to be able to help somebody else yeah so like you said i can't imagine i don't understand what you're going through i i, I never would say that i do i don't get it um no. Because that's that's your that's that's a battle that you've got, and and you can be something awesome though to to somebody else too, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's what happens. You know, you become somebody else's uh, sponsor. You know. Yeah, and well, my I, fault. I, I, I try to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it's always helpful to be helpful. Yeah. Um, what um, with me, I don't even think about drinking at all. I mean, and it's always there. It's here right now in this room. Yeah. Uh, what it was that they're over there sitting down there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're backstage before you go on, there's all the fucking whiskey there and the blah 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 and the mm -hmm. fucking M and M's or whatever the hell. And yeah. um, it doesn't phase me at all. And it didn't before I started drinking again. But I was so low when this virus thing started. I was frightened to death. I was scared shitless. You know, I was, I was going to the um, to the supermarket. I'm sure a lot of people did what I did. I go to the supermarket, buy a bottle of water like this, and wipe it down to make sure I didn't get any, you know, shit off of it. The oh, right. And don't touch your phone. Oh, crap. I better wash my hands now, making sure I, everything was pretty clean. And uh, it just it got worse and worse and worse. And the only thing, as I said, the only thing I could think of was just getting fucking dry right. to sleep. Right. Yeah. Which yeah. is totally wrong. It made me feel so bloody ill. Yeah. I'm, I had nights where I was like, you know what? Going to have margaritas till I just don't feel, you know, whatever. I just want to have, I want to chill out. And yeah. then I was finding the same thing just yeah. in my little way. I don't drink a lot, uh, but sometimes I'm just like, you know what? Wow. No, that didn't, that didn't sit well with me. Yeah. You know, I used to drink a lot, you know, yeah. with rainbow and whatever. I mean, I would drink a crate of fucking beer. You know, if there's 12 bottles in the crate there, I would pick it up and drink the whole fucking lot. Wow. You know? And then uh, be ahead of it. But I'm drunk before anybody else is, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, that's what happened with the Michael Shanker thing. Uh, that afternoon before the show, I, oh, I told you. Uh, I saw right. Moody, one of my friends, he was with White Slake at the time. We went out to the pub with David and, you know, Oh, it's been a long time, Graham. Have another one. Have another one. Oh, I don't want it. Oh, I'll tell you what, have one of these. Oh, I'll have one of them. And uh, yeah. I go back to my dressing room and I knock on the door. And Michael was he, was, he was in my dressing room for some fucking reason. And I wanted my coat because it had uh, my money in it or something. So I knocked on the door and said, Michael, can you let me in? Oh, no. Fuck off. Fuck off. I'm sleepy. I thought, what the fuck is this? So when I did get my money, I bought. I bought some more fucking beer and got because it, this wasn't good on a gig night. It's telling me to fuck off. Yeah, I know. You know when I'm, I've got all these songs, I just learned from uh, yeah. when Barry Barden was singing. So yeah. they're all on the stage, all bits of paper, you know, cheat sheets. They're yeah. everywhere. You know, it's like bloody wallpaper. Yeah. And, you know, he's telling me to fuck off in my own dressing room because we all had separate dressing rooms. How about that? <laughs> That's harsh, isn't it? And so uh, <laughs> you know. It was just a horrible day all around. Uh, all I wanted was my jacket. That's all I wanted. Let's just give me my jacket. No response. <laughs> well, that was one of my things, too, uh, that I, I remember picking up all those years ago. Is Ah, ah yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, I remember it very well. Yeah. We were supposed to go there 
this last year and we got COVID yeah. canceled. Yeah. So, I'm, uh, yeah. Um, I've had a couple of things canceled too. Because same thing. Yeah. Supposed to go to Russia in September, canceled. Supposed to go oh. to Japan a few months ago. Uh, I played with a band called Anthem. Have you heard of those guys? Yes. Yes. Anthem. Yeah. And uh, no, that was canceled. That was going to be a good little run, you know, about 10 shows or something. Perfect. Yeah, because that's a huge, huge reunion ish thing right there. Yeah. Well, everybody's sitting around doing fuck all. You know, we're, we're watching every serial on, or series on TV, which you can't stop once you watch one and go, oh, what happens now? You know, all these addicted, addicted yeah. to death. Yes. <laughs> I can't, oh, it's finished. No, it can't be. It can't be so we were, <laughs> it was one last night, I think. Yeah, it's terrible. We're sitting in bed there and, it's just amazing. And you're just like, oh, I'm hungry now. I'll have some cereal. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's what was crazy. That's what's crazy about the pandemic that we have. I mean, you know, other people have been through this shit. Yeah. You yeah. know, decades ago, centuries yeah. ago. And they didn't have Netflix. They didn't have shit tons of food in their house. They didn't have people delivering food to their fucking house. They didn't have all this stuff. And they're bitching and whining. And I'm like, what the hell? Just yeah. take it down, people. Yeah. It's I mean, a it's, shitty time. Now, I get it. But now we're getting it back now, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's what I heard today. We're talking about it. Oh, what? what? Fuck. Here we go again. Get your mask out again. You know? But yeah. I, I always wear the mask anyway. You know? I, the only times, the only reason I'll, uh, I'm not concerned about it. That's just me. I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just saying that my system is good. I've, I've been blessed with it you know, and an immunity system that's really good. Yeah. And I'm not concerned about it. Okay. And I do understand that other people are. And I, and so when I go to the store, I just wear it because I want to be yeah. neighborly. I don't need to freak anybody out. Yeah. It's not like they're asking me to get on all fours and crawl around the store. Right. Just put on a mask and get your shit and get out. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have all you the know? shots? Did you have right. the shots? Did you? No? No, me? Yeah. Oh, I had to get. I, I got both. You had both, did you? I, I'm yeah. just playing safe. I, I, I had, yeah, I had a heart condition going on, and I had to protect yeah. myself. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, play it safe. I mean, that's how I feel. You know, and the kids and everything. Oh, God. you know, my my daughter's kids. Mm -hmm. Boy. My kids feel the same. I mean, they they they, you know, they want to be safe with everything, and yeah. Uh, I have no, everybody does what they got to do. And that's yeah. awesome. That's the way it should be. And everybody ought to shut the hell up about whatever. But here's my thing. This is the thing I keep bringing up lately. Remember Dr. Seuss? Yeah. yeah. I keep concerning myself about the story of the Sneetches. That's my big thing. <laughs> what, was, what was that? That was when some of the Sneetches had stars on their chest and some of them didn't. And they started oh. being prejudiced against each other. And you're like, yeah. Hey, 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 Sh yeah. cut the shit. We don't yeah. need to be doing that shit. That's why that book exists. Read yeah. it and don't pull that shit on people. Yeah. Correct. You know? Absolutely right. Talk to I'm like, it's my thing. right. It's my, it's whatever. Yeah. Just settle down. Yes. Yeah. Be people, please. Just be people. Because <laughs> we all, you know. You got to think about, you know, other people though. When, when people don't have a mask on, did they have the shots or not? How do you know? And, and really, not what's, it, what's it matter? Well, I want to get infected. Well, I mean, but anybody can carry it. Well, yeah. Wait, wait, you know. talking about the virus. You know, yeah, the mask thing. Yeah. Contact-wise, too, anybody can carry it around. Yeah. You know, I so I don't know. And that's why that's why it's a bigger problem than me, because I, I'm, not a, I'm not an official. Nobody... You. That's telling me this is a doctor and knows anything. Well, and, you know, I don't know. I'm just playing it safe, and, and that's great. And and again, that's safe. that's what it's about. It's about yeah, yeah. doing what you got to do to yeah. make yourself feel stronger, to make yourself feel uh, better, because you you need to feel good and feel yeah. safe and be confident, so that your body stays good and strong and confident. Right, absolutely. If you worry, stress is going to kill you. I just went in to get tests done, a biopsy done. The doc's like, well, I think you might have cancer. Well, I'm like, oh, okay. And he goes, well, you don't seem too worried about it. 
And I got one has a cancer on it. On her head. Oh, uh, basal yeah. cell carcinoma. Car little boss and over. No, basal cell carcinoma. Yes, it's Basal cell head. carcinoma. Carcinoma. Yeah. yeah, and um, geez. Yeah. So, so he said, you don't seem too worried. I go, well, what can I do about it? And also, I'm like, isn't that why you're here? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I, what, and I said, and stress is going to kill you. So what good is that? Yeah. And, and then everything yeah. was fine. I got tested. Everything was fine. Not a problem. No, okay. So I'm like, you're okay. Just, you're okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not going to make sure you uh, put your mask on every five seconds. But yeah, anyway. Right. So, to, uh, can I move over here? Yeah, do it. I'm just, I've got to move. There's all kinds yeah. of accidents. Okay, sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Dinner time. Yeah, we should let you get rolling here soon. No, just go like I'm, I'm going over here. I'm walking with my legs. <laughs> That's a good place to start. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> my knee's been giving me here. trouble lately. I don't like it. What's that? My knee's been giving me trouble lately. I don't oh, like I, it. I have a bad knee, a bad shoulder, two bad shoulders, mm. bad knee. And okay, you win. Yeah, I, I do win. I've got to um, <laughs> fall, fucking fall into <laughs> And your grand bonnet. Win. Damn it, you win. All Thank right. you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, he's got that over me. You know? my <laughs> it's terrible. No, it's bloody awful. Well, I mean, that's it's like my shoulders. It's fucking yeah. uh, arthritis. Arthritis yeah. shoulders, both of them. Severe yeah. arthritis. And my knee, severe arthritis. And yeah. my ankle, severe arthritis. So my legs don't ankle, have it. Do not understand. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can't do any. You suddenly realize how much you need those areas to actually just function during the day. Yeah. And I'm trying to put plates away in the cupboard or something, and they go, oh, "You can't do it," and yeah. it makes me feel very, very old. Yeah, which I am. I mean, you know, it makes me even older. Really. Yeah, I think Dana Carvey in, in one of his uh, more recent comedies. He was talking about uh, how he he's getting to that age now where anything he's like, "Ow, why? What what happened?" Oh, no. he was, I don't know. I just answered the phone. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what it's like. That's... Yeah, and you know, uh, uh, I can't put the dog leash on because I have to bend my knee, and then mm -hmm. I will hurt. Do you do anything knee. in particular? And someone just throb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just, ugh. and my knee that... cracks. He is, you know, my yeah. shoulder. It's, I can hear them bump. They bump. Do you, uh, do you go to a chiropractor at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I did all that shit, and then I okay. went to my doctor, my uh, surgeon, I should say, and yeah. he said, look, your body's <laughs> falling apart, kid. <laughs> he said, you've got to have shoulder, shoulder, knee, ankle, all that done. So first of all, I think they get my right knee done because okay. it's bothering me. Yeah. You know. Mine's my left. Yeah, that same with you. Mm -hmm. Get that done. I think you'll feel more like a person. You know, nah, I have well, found you know, things that give me relief from the pain, and that helps a lot. I use yeah. CBD yeah. products. Yeah, you know, CBD creams with turmeric and things like that. They really are magical. And yeah, better than any of the prescription drugs I've gotten to help that stuff out. They yeah, really I, really you know, I, I've tried everything, but but yeah. it, you know, I don't know. It's me, me and drugs, but they just don't seem to work on me very well. No, yeah. interesting. Because of the past, I think yeah. you know yeah. my body's become immune to any kind of fucking pill. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, Gabapentin that works, and that which is uh, what Bethany's on right now to sleep. Great well, sleep. And, yeah, guy and I swear by Tiger Balm. I mean, we we use that a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta love Tiger Balm. Go oh, to Walgreens, yeah. Tiger Balm. <laughs> Mark, he's not gonna turn me onto that. They so this will make you feel better, and it does. Yeah. yeah, we just need to get a tub for Guy and just dip him in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's a sad old world. Yeah, and it's, it's amazing how short life is. When you sort of reach, when That'd I reach great, now, yeah, yeah. 60. I wish I had a Tiger Bomb jumpsuit sometimes. Yeah. 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 Yep. But the years go so quick, quick, really quickly now. And it's yeah. uh, scary. When I, when I think, like, in 10 years, I'll be... 83. It's pretty We're trippy. Only is it? How can it's I be 83? Trippy. That's stupid. That's stu <laughs> hey, hey, happy birthday, Grim. What are you? I'm 83. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? Yeah, it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> Can't be fucking 83 in 10 years. I'm a bloody rock star, oh, man. I'm 83. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I let my hair go gray because I'm not going to the hairdresser, you know, barber. And as I said, it's growing. Look at it. Look at that. Yeah. Um, it's long as fuck. But I, I didn't want to go to a handicap because of um, the dreaded, you know, virus thing. Yeah. Well, and, you know, no matter what Richie says, you know, you still don't ever have to go out a window to get your hair cut. Just no. use the door. That was such a made-up story. It's so scary. <laughs> I, just, it really I love talking to you about that and knowing that. Yeah. It's a load of bollocks. It really is. Man, Nothing and I got to keep that, that one handy, too. It is a load he, of bollocks. But he did walk off stage and hide behind the amps all night. <laughs> That's just funny. And this morning, we did have a, a, a meeting, a band meeting about my, my hair. Uh, yeah, he's the guy who I love his guitar playing and his writing, but I understand he can be kind of quirky. <laughs> yeah, he's got quirky, something, yeah. you know? But I, I loved him. I got on with him really well. Um, most, you know, a lot of people didn't like him. He didn't mm. get on very well with Cozy, but I got on really well with him. And uh, I was surprised how many people thought he was nasty and shit. He wasn't really. He well, was, he isn't. No, and I, I think from what I've, from again, hi, welcome to me, forming opinions. I have no idea. But <laughs> at the same time, you know, based on what you do here, it seems as though he, um, I don't know, almost had a, an, it almost seems the stories show an odd militance about him um, that, you know, where he was almost pushing you I don't know, to be better or to be whatever in this whatever misunderstood way. Mm -hmm. So there's something, like we say, that's underlying that that he's like that. Well, and, and you just love them where they are, right? You just, yeah. You know. the, only, the only thing I could say about him is not that he was standoffish. He was very shy. He's very shy. Right. He's one of those people, like, you know, when people ask him for his autograph and all that kind of thing, he would say, no, I can't. No, no, not now, not now. Um, of course... You know, when that happens, you go, oh, he's not very nice, is he? Right. You know, but right. that's what he does. He just doesn't like the showbiz side of it. He likes to here. Not to signing yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I get that completely, especially yeah. in Japan. Mm -hmm. When we went to Japan, it was fucking Beatles time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, and it still is, you know, when I go there sometimes. <laughs> I'm wow. just here, but anyway. Yeah, I, I had I talking to somebody in Striper one time, and they're like, "We showed up, and it was like we were the Beatles." And I said, "Yeah." Or he goes, "Like the Beatles or the Stones." I go, "You got to realize, to some people, you're their band. So, yeah, to some people, you are their Stones or their Beatles." So, yeah, I'm not, yeah, isn't it funny? Yeah, yeah I can't. <laughs> it doesn't register with me that I, I can understand. I could get that. I could get that. Oh yeah, but recently I met um. Uh, what's his face? Gene Simmons. Sure. And, uh, I, I I didn't want to make it. We were on. The, we we're, were doing the same uh, show as a festival, and um, my, my girlfriend and my manager at the time said, "Yo, we got to come meet Gene Simmons." Uh, I said, "Why? I don't know him. You know, I've got to meet him." And uh, I put, I'm not interested. I don't. I don't really want to. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anyway, I dragged out the dressing room, walking down the hallway, and there he is standing there. <laughs> I, I heard him, which again, like you were saying, like people, you don't realize people are watching you and are interested in your life, your music. And I heard him go, Oh my God. He was in awe of my presence. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's that's really awesome. weird because I, you know, I, I never liked Kiss. I never will, I don't think, but they're huge here, I know. And um, in England, they weren't that big. But I mean, I was just, Oh, okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> I wasn't like, seeing, and I think he heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice to hear this gasp of, you know, wonderment at my very appearance. Right. right. <laughs> I gotta look at. I gotta yeah, look at. Because I gotta look at my sheet and see people. what I've got. Hey. I'm like thinking about what we've been talking about. So many awesome things. I just was like, what's on my sheet? What's on your sheet? Oh, you know, I'm going to jump back for a second. Um, and then I really want to talk to you uh, mainly about, um, uh, about what's happening now. That's really important yeah. to me because that's really, that's where we are right now. And I really want you to let everybody know what's happening. 
and stuff. Um, let me just do one. I'll just rubber band all the way back to okay. 1975 when you were in Three for All. Yeah. In the movie band. Yeah. Yes, and I what was the name? What was the name of the band? Oh, uh, Billy Beethoven. Billy oh, Beethoven. Billy Beethoven. Billy Beethoven. And who else was in? Was were any of the other folks in the band musicians? Or were they all comedic no. actors? Oh, except for um, Chris. Chris. Um, oh crap! I forgot his last name. Chris, oh, yeah. the guy that was pretending to play guitar. Yes. Um, in the band. Did they not have a bass player in that band? Sorry. Did they not have a bass player in that band? I don't know. I'm, I'm a <laughs> bass player, so. and I saw three guitars on that stage. You had one, and the other yeah. two had two guitars. Oh, my God, bass player. Oh, did we? Yeah, that would be Paul. Paul Nicholas. Okay. Who was, right. He did a lot of uh, musicals in London, you know, okay. like uh, and all that kind of stuff. I'll have Music. to look at it again because I, I was like, I don't think I see a bass in yeah. there. I see three guitars, I think, but not I mean, a bass. Yeah. I don't know, really. I can't and, remember so long time but you did two songs in that movie. Hmm. And do you own a copy of the movie? Uh, somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched it. It's been on, you know, it's been, uh, oh, that it's been on TV a couple of times. Okay. Um, oh, we're lost for a second. I'm sure it'll come back here. There's always that, there's always that dead space. Yeah. yeah, even you. I'm losing you sometimes too. Uh oh, I'm wondering if maybe I should have you unplug the computer and maybe walk over toward the doorway more or something. I don't know. Because there is a big delay. We'll see if we can uh, see if we can come back to it. Um, yeah, it was interesting. Three for all. So he does he does one song in the movie. Uh, and it's a regular band setup. They're all looking, and all the, the people in the crowd, the movie script goes, all the people in the crowd are like, yeah, whatever. There's a couple of people that are digging it, but most everybody's like, eh, I'll hope he, he, I'm sure he'll come back. He'll hit the link. He'll come back. But then there's a, a follow-up video that's on YouTube you can watch, and they come back out, and they're all glammed out like the suite and the New York Dolls or – um David Bowie, they're all glammed out and they play a different song and everybody loves the song. <laughs> it's like, woo, everybody's digging it because they're all glammed out. So it was kind of kind of wild. So uh, the perception. Yeah, Three for All is the name of the, the, the movie. Uh, it's 1975. Um, and I'm going to take a look at this real quick here too because it's something else I wanted to, I want to make sure of anything else I needed to talk to him about before we went. Um yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully they'll come here on tour when he's starting this new band. Yes, I would love that. Yeah, no, I asked him about Dio. That's cool. Um, well, see if we'll see if he comes back. I'll see if anything comes through on my phone. Um, but I will make mention of this before if we get going here. Uh, before I go again, this Freddie Salem album. Check it out. Rock Candy Records is carrying this. They have a lot of other great titles just go to their website you'll be amazed at the stuff that they've reprinted and that's available the creed album i told you guys about that and it's still sitting right here why because it's worth it so this album is fantastic your friend roger that stayed at the house had a copy of this on vinyl remember that guy wow yep yeah. yeah and there we go oh, hi um, you're back yes uh the ship sank. I don't know what is, happened. Is that good? Yeah, sometimes oh, sometimes there's a dead space in the house. That happens with mine, too. Yeah. You know, and I just want to... There was a lot of anchor in the room. That's why the ship sank. Oh, wow. Did you do that? <laughs> I did. Yeah, da, 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 da. I'm here all Thank night. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> we usually say, don't make guy contact. That's what we usually say. <laughs> Rehearsals <laughs> down in this basement are always... A hilarious thing we have such a great time yeah. we get more laughter out than we do rehearsing yeah. but we still get our work done but yeah, it's yeah. Always guy is out. guy is sitting against my first wall of shame which is my cd collection um oh yeah in which you know there are many you know i haven't even put any of these up here 
in which there are many albums uh, such as this. I've and, seen it. Uh, and it's what, what? this. And I love this original. Was this an original cover for this album? What album? This D Disturbing the Peace that had the woman with the gun on it? No, that's a redone thing. Okay, somebody did that. Yeah. Um, I don't know who did that for who did this for now. now here's the first Graham Bonnet record. Such a cool, see. cool cover, cool James Dean cover. Yeah, I was gonna say you got a very James Deanish attitude going on there. Yeah. I can't see and it. And then uh I can't see no it. bad habits. <laughs> no, you mean but I can't see it. Okay, I got you. Um and know. you've gone again. There, can you where are you? Oh no. I, gone black. We can Oh, okay. We can see you. Okay. I can't see you. I've got all this other stuff <laughs> going on. Hotel. What's this? That to me. What's happening? Uh, what are you with? He's, it's going yeah, all you over. Re, what did you you just got to restart, and some things are on the screen. Yeah. I touched nothing. Got some pop ups. Did I? I didn't touch anything. Oh, hang on. I didn't touch anything. <laughs> oh, I didn't touch anything. <laughs> Wasn't me, Mum. Wasn't me. Wasn't me, Mum. Sorry. What the hell? <laughs> it's well, we're glad to here. see you. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no offense, Graham, but she's a lot prettier. Oh, oh I'm on camera. Oh. <laughs> I'm on camera. Oh, no. You're being broadcast worldwide now. Oh, no. Our millions of viewers. Are... No, that, I really, truly, I would have put no, makeup it's, on. And... <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah, can't fix perfect. That's what I always tell oh my God. my you know, I'm talking about makeup. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Wait, I wish I could see you because I love you. <laughs> oh. You're pretty lovable. Oh, okay. Wait, I'm very squishy. <laughs> what did you say? He's very squishy. Oh. He, he ain't lying. I always say soft and squishy. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Hi. 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 All right, then. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's a good picture. We like it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, or you were saying. Yeah, whoever was saying. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, we were just talking about the movie. I said, do you have a copy? You said it's on TV sometimes. Yeah. How, so, um, and you have two words. You have a two-word line in that movie, right? Oh, me, Tarzan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It take a long time to memorize them. <laughs> uh, a while, <laughs> and the rest of it is uh, they did a whole reel or whatever of me going, "What? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean?" Just so like an interject yeah, that like wherever that. they needed it. Huh? Reaction, reaction shots. They didn't want to give me a part because they didn't think I could act. Because <laughs> at, that, at that time, my my ex wife is in that the blonde girl. Yeah, Adrian, right? Adrian. And, uh, you know, her being an act, well, acting and being on stage, whatever, it's all the fucking same. It is the you same. You're to be someone you're not, you know. Yeah. So I would have been okay, but they didn't, they didn't believe me. Hey, a lot of musicians are frustrated actors, and look how many actors are actually decent musicians. I mean, fucking it all a. goes together. That's not true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, how, did, um, how did you guys do with your transitions through – Alcatraz and how has that affected what you're doing now with Alcatraz? Tell us about and, and then also I suppose I know this is a long moment, but weave in if you can the distinctions between your smart ass. <laughs> weave in time's up, buddy. <laughs> Stuart, how do you Stuart, how do you deal with these moments in a show? Well, one word, fucker. Um <laughs> So <laughs> that was your that was your Dio moment, right? Um, there you go. Um, <laughs> so, and 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 how how what's going on with the? Are there two Alcatraz factions going on right now? Alcatraz. Well, we're we're um. There's a thing going on. Who Alcatraz? Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Yeah, we're uh, there's a bit of a battle going on with who can use the name at the moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um. I think it should be me, obviously. I think it should be me. I think so, too. <laughs> so they have a new singer, and um, they've made, they're have made they making an album 
they put out a uh, video, I believe, on YouTube. I haven't seen it, but they want to keep them. Our manager fired himself. This is what happened. He fired himself and said, I'm walking away from this. I've had enough of all the bickering between everybody. And uh, I thought, oh, okay. So he's gone. And then I got in touch with the other guys saying, we'd better get ourselves another manager. And suddenly I find out those guys want to stick with the guy who just fired himself. Right. Very, very friendly with one of the, with our keyboard player. And so mm -hmm. they, had, they had something going on. Uh, I don't mean anything sexual or anything, but you never know. But then they, I think they had a deal, some kind of a deal going. Because we played so many gigs uh, uh, the year before last, whenever it was, and came home with hardly any money. And mm -hmm. going, well, where's the fucking money going? So mm -hmm. I think merchandise is being sold behind our back, along with other things. Yeah. It's a bit suspicious that uh, the two of them are now trying to um, get the name Alcatraz copyright, you know. So we're mm. doing the same thing. And uh, I don't mind sharing the name with them if they call themselves, uh, you know, uh, Jimmy Waldo's Alcatraz, but it won't do anything. So oh. I can do, so I can say a Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz or Alcatraz with me, you know, whatever. But to use the name on its own, I don't think either of us can do that. You right. should call it the real Alcatraz. The inescapable the real, Alcatraz. Exactly. Yeah. I, mean, I might as well because it's um, they know that – hello, that uh, the dog's here now. <laughs> oh, right. Hey. Very good. Right, Harris, in case you want to see. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's Lucy. 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 Lucy, babe. Lucy. Yeah, that's her. And um, – what was I going to say? What was I talking about? Uh, you were talking about the, the Alcatraz. The thing. Oh, the Alcatraz. Yeah, just like There'll be, if possible, that's how we'd like it to end up, a nice peaceful settlement where they can use the yeah. name. But, you know, say the Alcatraz, blah, 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 and right. I can use Graham Bonnet's Alcatraz, and they can use whatever Alcatraz. Yeah. Alcatraz. If you ever need a new band name, Graham, I keep a stockpile oh. of absolutely brilliant ideas. Don't. Don't, in, don't, in don't, don't do it. Don't do it. That that. You know my, my latest one, are you ready for this? Is yeah. fallopian yeah. tuba. Oh. What? <laughs> fallopian tuba. Fallopian <laughs> tuba. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Was that a song? <laughs> it could be. I tell people that's what I play now when they ask me, what do you play? Fallopian tuba. God. I think we're all kind of silly here now. This is... This Mine is where the plane uh, starts diving, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, this, this, is, no <laughs> this is when George Kennedy starts freaking out. No, yeah, we're done. Um, I, as, anyway, as I was saying, there's going to be the hopefully the two Alcatraz. If they win the case, so be it. But yeah. um, I don't think they will. But if we can share the name, that that'd be great. And nobody's going to get pissed off with anybody. Yeah, what's so hard about that? I remember when uh, I saw BTO twice in the same Yeah, yeah. Because Tim exactly. was touring with his group, and then the 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 formation of the group that I really grew up with on um, uh, Not Fragile, that was the – then they came in, and I was so thrilled to see that, that yeah, lineup, yeah. and that was brilliant. Oh, so no, people I, do it. Ron Keel's wishing that Mark Ferrari would go out yeah, and do Mark Ferrari's Keel. But what they're doing is a bitter, it's a bitter feeling. They're, they're just like, well, Graham walked away. I, I just find myself. I don't, I don't want to play with these guys if uh, they're going to have this our old manager back again because he was yeah. screwing us up. And yes. I, I, as I said, one of the band members, I think, had a bit of a thing going on where they were screwing the band out of the money. Not we made billions of dollars, but you know you made what you can. I mean these right. are, you know. But so, so you know, I just want it to be, as I said, like a peaceful thing. I, I don't right. want to. I, I want to start a new Alcatraz with Jeff Loomis and um, other people. I'm not quite sure exactly who yet, but I've got a few other people in mind that'll be a stronger uh, band. You know. So yeah, I mean, Do no have, doubt Jeff playing as well. Do you have a solid drummer at all at the moment? So we've got a couple of guys in mind, but I, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Okay. I, and we have a keyboard player. Uh, but it's sort of like, I don't know yet because it's yeah. early days. So, because the way it's going to start off is me and Jeff doing the album after we've done the Grant Bonnet album. Yeah. And uh, then 
we'll think about who's going to play on the fucking thing later because for the tracks obviously we can use anybody i don't want yeah. it to be the way but right now i think that's all we can do yeah. i'll tell you and what let, if it was if yeah it was i mean me, if somebody comes in and said yeah i really like to do this right. and stay with the band not just make an album do right. the whole thing. as well tough, as the keyboard player too. yeah that's a tough one man because i'll tell you what if i could throw a name in the ring i know exactly who i'd tell you to use for drums but they're oh, yeah. doing the adulting <laughs> thing and they can't you know they wouldn't be able to break away for all of that you know? right because it's it's guy's yeah. son is who i would tell oh, you to my use God. Yeah, he's fantastic. because not only is he an amazing drummer like uh well i i always liken him to uh well i can't think of his first name uh mr chambers um from niacin oh 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 yeah uh yeah i've got it right here i can't think of his name either yeah my son is not because he's my son but he is just an amazing drummer and he's he one of the greatest like drummers out of st louis is what he is yeah, he plays with the st louis symphony yeah. a couple times a year for special shows things like that. yeah he's really good well i'll keep that in mind no well, we do have two place. drummers that I can't remember who the fuck they are at the moment. We have two drummers at all. <laughs> I just thought of another band name if you want to use another prison name. How about Rikers Island in the Sun? Exactly. That way I people know it's you. I, it's I, Island in the Sun. I've been that fucking name forever. I don't care about the name Alcatraz. But you see, the only thing the, those guys have is the name. They don't right. have yeah. the music. Because right, right. I wrote They the don't have you. Name. They don't have Ingve. They don't have Steve Vai. It's not going to no. be like it was exactly you know? i mean i wrote the bloody songs with ingve and with steve and you know that was it i mean we didn't get very far with the alcatraz albums oh danny johnson third the yeah, third there you go. Third album which was terrible because that was when the, the third, whole band came to a drastic end because we're asked to do you know cover versions of things and it wasn't mm -hmm. the same it was sure. not right you know be radio friendly you know great can you write some lyrics that people can understand what so, people so, do understand yeah. They just got to love your lyrics, man. Your lyrics just blow me away. Yeah. It's just writing. It's just yeah. you know, writing a bloody letter or something. It makes right. no sense. There's nothing mystical about it. No. But because it isn't like, like draw the saw from the, yeah, whatever. You know, that sort yeah. of fake medieval well, doodad. You don't have it. to decipher what you write, but at the same time, oh. it's very thought provoking stuff. And I yeah. like that about your lyrics. You know, yeah, like you tell a story and you do it very well and with such emotion and passion I, in your voice, it just makes it come across wonderful. Oh, I sing along with you all the time in the car, man. <laughs> You're one of my go-to guys, you know. That's, that's why. I, that's why I'm eager for Guy. I'm eager for you to listen to those first those first two solo records yeah, because yeah um, because you really get the you, you get the things that we who love all the heavy music and have, mm. have gone through this career of yours through, you know, all these bands that we've been talking about, but you, there's such uh like Glenn Hughes, you know, he's got that other side to the yeah, yeah. power and glory in his yeah. voice. There's that other side and you really yeah. get a lot of that in those albums and yeah. the songs are so well put together. Yeah, they, I agree. I mean, I, I had great fun making those albums always because yeah, I, can imagine. I played, you know. Uh, me too, I can imagine. It was so fucking good. I was, I'm never nervous of anything going going wrong. Well, not too much anyway. I mean, <laughs> just, just just the best, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah. John Lord, etc. you know, I mean, Cozy, John, Don Airy, oh, uh, oh fuck, Mickey Moody, yeah. and on and on, and the list goes on. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was just... To go to uh, the studio and start work with those guys was always great fun, no matter what time of day it was. Right. Well, we know we know how kind of how you dealt with Ingve and his issues, even though he's a phenomenal musician. How was it writing with people like Steve Vai or Michael Schenker? I mean, everybody's got their own yeah. idioms, but uh, you know, I get the I get the feeling personally, just from what I've read in Steve Vai interviews and every time I see him on a video and things like that, he seems like not only an intelligent guy, but a relatively cool guy to work with mm -hmm. is the impression I get. Michael, yeah. he's a little bit harder because he doesn't communicate with people a whole lot. Yeah. And, but he's a phenomenal player and phenomenal yeah, guitar yeah. writer. So I wonder how that is for somebody like you to work with people like that, how it worked out. Well, I'll tell you that my favorite album is the one that uh, Steve did with me. And the other guys, 
It's beautiful. I think album. A lot of time. Yeah, we, we, yeah, thanks. We really thought about it. And Steve is such a great player and so different from England. So and, absolutely, yeah. You know, he he, he played. But well, it just been with Frank Zappa, so that's where he's kind of, you know, what note is this? It's um, an A. Okay, I mean that's what Frank Zappa was all about. Give me this note. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a, everything has a note. You know, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what Steve told me about him. I thought that's great. It's great. It's really interesting. And he had that that sort of avant-garde way of playing. And that's that fits me perfectly. I like to be a bit stupid, you know. I, I like to write <laughs> words. Yeah, I write to write words that are kind of funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, that album to me, the second album of Alcatraz was the one. The first one was a tester. Oh bloody hell! I got a picture of all them. Uh, yeah. but, <laughs> is that me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first one was just like a, a tester to see how things will go. But um, yeah, uh, Ingve was like Richie and um so it's great 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 bloody player and then but when uh, steve came along it's like what the fuck is this guy mm. you know yeah so different and so weird in a way but i understood exactly what he was on about that's you know, cool uh musically yeah i mean he, he his songs would sometimes go on for uh you know 10 minutes a bit of the older frank zappa there but mm. yeah they get them down for the band you know what i mean so yeah. i go it to his house and we say okay, da, 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 and then we get the arrangement together because he always had lots of little twists and turns to take in his uh, arrangements. Everything wasn't a knee for one thing, right. you know. So <laughs> it's yeah. always fun to work with him. And in fact, I know for sure that he likes that album a lot too. The one we did That's together. Cool. Uh, I He's think just it's incredibly best. musical. Yeah, it, it's. I think it's my best, personally. Vocal. Is that vocal, right? What else? Words. I mean, the other ones are okay, but this one yeah. I was really excited about. You know, yeah. great fun making it as well as mm -hmm. you know, performing. Yeah, I, I think that it, that that first album had so much awesome power in it, and yeah. uh, and then it that the next record just was, had a little bit a um, uh, little more technique in it. Just a little, you know, there was yeah, a lot. and yeah. it was it was punchier in a different way, you know. Yeah. Um, and Wire in the Wood, it's just, I mean, all of these songs are just, just, yeah. uh, it was a brilliant follow up record. So, I mean, it, you know. Well, I, I think so too. I yeah. think so too. You, you yeah. have this son. Uh, yes, I know I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God I didn't have me. to say it. I'm a split personality. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, I agree with you because I really enjoy that. And I, do you know who's the best, te what, what used to be, the best tester with some good songs, my mum and dad. So I, I played some tracks that, that me and Steve had done. They were over to visit. And uh, when I was making that album with Steve and the rest of them, uh, they were over to visit. And I would take the tapes, you know, a rough mix home and play them to my mum, mum and dad and to see what they were saying. It doesn't sound very, does it? But, but, <laughs> but your mum and dad are very honest. Oh, yeah. they are. You sound horrible on that. But every <laughs> Graham, what the fuck are you doing? But every track. <laughs> they probably broke every down track. and like, shit, son, you've got it right. Oh, no, this is right. It. Oh, bloody hell. Why are you singing about a girl dancing on a pole? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, they, I would play it to them and they would listen. And I'd go, what do you think? And I got it. every time they would say, oh, yeah. And they loved it. <laughs> so when Steve would come over, they were just... I said, Dad, I said to my dad, he plays like this, you know, he says that he plays guitar like a piano, uh, which he sort of did. I'd never seen that before back then, you know, yeah. um, probably, uh, you know, Van Halen, but, you know, yeah. he, he did, but Steve's way of playing is totally different. Oh, even yeah, though yes. it's all the same, <laughs> it was something so, special. So fluid, about yeah. Which yeah. is chord progressions. I've always yeah. thought of his writing as just something beyond human. The way he writes and the way he plays is just no other yeah. guitar player has ever captured yeah. that feel like he has. I agree, it's absolutely. Amazing. I love yeah. him. Pretty not good. even his, not even his teacher, Satch. No, you know. completely different player. Yeah, so different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Joe Satriani, and um, didn't he help Steve at one point, Joe? Yeah, he was. Yeah. Steve yeah. showed up at his door with a guitar and strings. Oh yeah, it's an old story. Yeah, a long while ago. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, 
a problem. Is, it, is that it? <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> one of my favorite, you know, you mentioned about Steve doing, and I hate, I don't, you know, anyway, one of my favorite Steve Vai stories, and it's out there on YouTube, is when he was auditioning for Zappa and he had him do some chord, you know, arrangements and whatnot. And he said he got into one and he goes, all right. And he goes, now do this. Now, I can't remember what it was. I'm not that technical, but he goes, do this. And he goes, so the thing about it was, it was physically impossible to do this. And yeah. he said, so he's like, I, you know, I couldn't do it. And he said, I'm walking through the room. I put my guitar. I think he said he put his guitar away and he's walking through the room. He goes, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't just, I don't know. I couldn't do that. And he goes, it's okay. I heard Linda Ronstadt's looking for a new guitar player. <laughs> wow. And, and he's like, nice. what? And he goes, no, you got the job. You're fine. You got it. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> One of I, our I, I remember when I remember the first night playing with him uh, in LA somewhere. And um, he was, he was shit scared. And I'm glad, you know, his Hard manager, to imagine. He was trying <laughs> yeah. to do I can't go out there. I can't play like anybody. I said, no, you play like Steve fucking Vice. Exactly. You know, but, you know, <laughs> we did all the Ingway songs kind of thing. Yeah. You know, Hiroshima, Mon Amour and all that. Yeah. And he just said, I'm not not good at that. But he was. He was perfect at that. Dude. Oh, yeah. It, it didn't matter if he played exactly the same notes, but he played it very, very well. Mm -hmm. and, well, well, look, but what happened? He... Became Steve Vai, you know, fucking guitar god. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Well, and, and let's face it, all you, gotta do is, <laughs> all you got to do is look at him and go, you know what? Everybody on stage with you doesn't want you to play like Ingve. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'd we'd oh. rather not be walked all over all night long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was hard. A good buddy of ours from... <laughs> Yeah, a good buddy of ours from a place that Stuart and I both used to work, St. Louis Music Manufacturing Company, yeah. uh, actually was roommating at Boston, at Berkeley, with Steve Vai when he got the call from Frank Zappa. So that was kind of his point. Oh, of really? Him. He's a tremendous guitar player himself, a guy named Randy Hetledge. Yeah. yeah. Phenomenal guitar oh, yeah. guitarist. Yeah. And uh, he obviously learned a lot being with Steve. You could tell they were kindred spirits in the way they and, – and he knows him. He's brought Steve into town and uh, uh, the gal that plays so well uh, – does a double hand stuff. What is her? You know who I'm talking I about? I do. Did the flight of the bumblebee? Yeah. yeah oh, uh, oh my God! She's played with Michael Jackson. Oh, Jennifer Batten. Jennifer. Jennifer Batten. Yeah. He was a very, yeah. very much oh, uh, involved in bringing her I into town. I heard She's about it in the band minute. About really? Is it? Yeah. Because I didn't know what to do, <laughs> and I thought, oh fucking hell, yeah. you know, I'm not going to go do the Alcatraz thing again or what, you know. So I mean, I did eventually, but um, yeah, I talked to her on the phone. That, a lot of times, went to see her do a little showcase thing at one of the music stores around here with my daughter, because my daughter Keely's a real big fan of her, and she uh, said, get, "Get her autograph." I was like, "You go get it." Anyway, she did. <laughs> Jennifer's very shy, you know, and I think she's. She, I said to her, "Well, if you if we play together, um, would you be doing like Steve Byish kind of stuff?" She said, "Oh, absolutely, okay," and write songs like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, it'd be fucking great. Um, and then one day I was wondering what the hell we should call the band. And she said, why don't you just call it Bob? Oh, we lost you. Oh, he'll come back. Yeah, your sound froze. Hopefully we'll get back real, real soon here. Yeah. Back. Oh, man. Well, at what a moment. We'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> you can call it that. <laughs> what are you going to call it then? That's a Joe. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Wait till Joe sees this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I put your name in the ring for a drummer position and we mentioned, what are you going to call it? The, <laughs> Funny. Uh, the There you there. are. You're, oh, we lost oh, him. He'll be back. Uh, and then we probably ought to let him get rolling. I mean, it's yeah, we've taken up a lot of his time. Well, yeah. I mean, it's uh, what a blessing, you know, okay. to be able to do that. Uh, oh, wow, that's quick. Are we back, back again? Hey. Yeah. So, can you okay, believe we're going to call it the... You go, we're going to call it the... B yeah, she, oh, I see. Yeah, I said, why do, I can't think of a name to call this band. It never came to anything, anyway, but um, she said, why don't you call it Bonnet? And I said, no, that just sounds silly. People go, what, a hat? A hat? Yeah, well, I have a bonnet. At school, I used to get 
ribbed crazy, you know. Hi, Easter, how you doing? Oh, shut the fuck. You know, <laughs> oh, Easter, oh, they're, they're that's rude. Bonnets, you know. Oh, it's a that's funny rude. name, you know, it's a stupid name. But it, it's French, and so it's Bonnet, really. Yeah, there, there was a gentleman that actually did a video, and he was pronouncing it Bonnet. It's Bonnet, yeah. But yeah. I don't want to do that because it just sounded a bit, you know, silly. That's how oh. silly too. <laughs> Maybe you call the band Bonnet. A Bonnet. Indeed. Not Bonaire, Bonnet. But anyway. Uh, Could have called it batting down the hatches. Yeah, hey. <laughs> batting down the hatches. I'm here all night, folks. <laughs> That's what it scares me. Fucking stupid. Um, yeah, I was going to say, um, yeah, we, I talked to her a lot and saw her a couple of times. And, you know, she just sort of went off the idea. I think she's better off doing her things that she does at demonstrating how she plays, right? those kind of things, like Uli Roth does sometimes. Sure. Yeah, that, that's I love Uli Roth, God. What a, yeah, what a he's great player. too. Jesus. He does the same oh. thing. It yeah. is not necessarily in a band, it's just by himself. Yeah, he can do anything. Yeah. That, that's what she does or yeah. did. And I don't know what she does now, I don't know. I haven't spoken to her for bloody years. Mm -hmm. But she's fucking great. Oh, yeah. she's brilliant. She's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's a lot of young talent out there that's coming along and doing that doing some crazy amazing guitar stuff mm -hmm. yeah and and i think part i don't know part of the sad thing is is i'm like how are they even getting marketed they're online and they do a lot of video stuff but yeah. when all is said and done does anybody really know who they are do they play out do they have a yeah a gig where they're playing out a lot uh, i don't ever hear about them outside of no and they're sitting there just going to freaking town i mean yeah. There's a 13 year old I saw the other day. I'm like, what are you doing right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of her old videos. Yeah. I mean, everybody's playing like that now because that's what they're growing up with. Right. Yes. When I was growing up, it was, you know, Apache, you know, yep. instrumental, yep. all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, uh, Elvis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I never liked Elvis. But I mean, it was. Um, so if I was when I learned to play guitar, I was playing, you know, instrumentals like like Apache, you know, sure, like that. And then uh, I used to sing along on a couple of things. My cousin and I used to do like Everly, Everly Brothers tunes at school. Yeah. So me and him would start doing that, you know, uh, apart from playing the instrumental things. But now you hear these guitar players; they, they're following what Eddie Van Halen did, and they think that's the norm. So they. Right. Parrot fashion, whatever you want to call it, copy what they did. And you go, fuck. I mean, some of these kids, like you're saying, they're like 10 years old. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Bloody hell. But yeah. are they, if they're musicians or not, I don't know. The test is, okay, write me a song. Exactly. And can you play me something that on an acoustic that's a song? Not can you play a rhythm part with more than two fingers? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so, you know, there's a lot of good players, but I, I can't. I, I don't know if I'm being a bit stupid here, but I, I never know that they're really musicians. Right. No matter how right. great their technique is. Yeah. What about what you do with it? You know. Right. Yeah. It's right. got to come from somewhere. When you make music, it's got to yeah. come from somewhere. If you're doing somebody else's yeah. song, it's still got, you got to feel it from somewhere. You got to feel it in your yeah. heart. You got to make it your own when you do it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, you know, somebody else that you worked with, too, is this gentleman, Dario. <laughs> Dario. Yeah. Um, Dario Molo. And he's worked with a lot of people, uh, two mm -hmm. other people as well. And He's worked with uh, Glenn Hughes. Yeah, that's, there you go. Yeah, Tony as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's another great arranger of songs. He's amazing. Great guitar player. Great person. I love him. He wrote uh, a song for, um, wait a minute. Yeah, he, he wrote a song for the last Alcatraz album. Really? Uh, Very cool. Yeah. I mean, he wrote a song. I, well, I did with him. Um, but uh, he's a great. We went on tour, me, him, and Don Airy. We went out as a Don, Don Airy GB band, Grand Bonnet band, with Dario playing guitar. Very um, cool. And uh, the bass player from a band called Thunder. Uh, who, yep. who wrote, have you heard of them? Yeah, Thunder, oh, yeah. Harry James, the drummer. So we had the bass player from Thunder, Chris, Chris Childs, and Harry James, the drummer. So it's pretty wow. good, good fucking musicians there. Yeah, it's probably and, pretty uh, We went out you know, with Don playing and, you know, we're doing whatever you'd expect, you know, what, what you know we play since we've been gone and 
all night long and right. uh, lost in Hollywood, blah, 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 blah. Wow. All, all the well-known songs. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. For a while, you know. And then, uh, but of course, Dario went back to Italy and then he started playing this. Then I went over to Italy to play with him a few gigs with his band. And uh, eventually it sort of just fizzled out like it does after a few years. Yeah, yeah he's great. He's really great. Wow. Yeah, yeah I would love to. I, that's somebody I would love to talk to is Don Airy. I was actually yeah. I had a chance to see Ozzy when he collapsed in Champaign, Illinois, after getting <laughs> his rabies shots and uh, saw uh, Randy Rhodes and Rudy yeah. and Tommy and Don. Don was yeah. up in the castle, you know, and uh, and so they all he came out and was going to, he did over the mount two and yeah. a half words and drop to the floor. Mm -hmm. And I got to see Don and the rest of the guys all do over the mountain instrumentally. And then when <laughs> they were done, they yeah. came out and said, Ozzy has left the building. So <laughs> there was a lot of pissed off people, but you know, Don really? is a, Don is a really, uh, a, an amazing talent, obviously, and has oh, yeah. what a great career he's had too. So just had a birthday yeah. a couple days ago. He sure did. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's on this this album. Uh, he played Very on good. the Grand Bonnet album. This one we're doing right now. He's on. Uh, he's got. Uh, well, he played on one track, okay. and he's playing on it. Fucking hell! You can tell it's him. Him and John Lord. <laughs> my, oh my right. Those two. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Don, you know, Don obviously is he and I are very close. Uh, we That's go to crazy. see him if we go over to England. Always go and see him, and uh, stay at his house probably most of the time. He's a such a great ordinary guy. Mm. I like people like that. Yeah. You know, hey, most of the uh, rock star people that I've met that you know I, that I get along with, they're that yeah. way. They're just like talking to your neighbor over the fence. You know, it's yeah. Really, really cool. Adrian yeah, Ballou, awesome. sensational <laughs> musician who's worked with Eno and Bowie and yeah. Talking Heads and everybody. He, everybody. I met him at my first NAMM show, which was the last one in Chicago back in the 80s. And then I got to do backstage security for him here in St. Louis, a little club. Backstage security was the staircase going to the stairs and the parking lot. And I re-met him <laughs> oh, then, and he signed my guitar. Just a gracious guy. Just a super right. sweetheart of a man. Oh, and a genius musician. Phenomenal. I mean, what goes on in his head, I have no idea where it comes from. He comes well, up with great he sound. classically, you know. I mean, yeah. I, when, when I go to his house, he sometimes gets on the piano when I have my acoustic, and he starts playing all this fucking stuff. With the bloody hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> Playing, you know, the two keyboards at the same time and the blah, blah. Yeah. How do you do that? Because I'm fucking clever. That's <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, John Lord and him, they're peas in the pod, really. They, <laughs> they, they get John Lord, really. so well. Poor John, I, I don't know. He's a funny guy, funny man, fucking amazing musician, amazing. Him and Don, the best. Yeah. Yeah. And were you working at one point? Uh, this is just an aside. You were working, you had a project you were working with, with, with him and Cozy, or do I have that wrong? Uh, no. no okay. No, not a problem. I just, a different thing. I'm, I must've misread something. I just, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he, Cozy was on my albums. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, we didn't do anything live with him at all. Okay. No. Okay. Or an album comes to that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was an amazing keyboard, amazing keyboardist. Just uh, uh, and like you said, I, he's somebody I wish I would have met up with. Yeah, because I've yeah. seen some interviews. Sounds like a, a really cool, real cool guy. Like they Dave are. Grohl. I'd love to meet Dave Grohl. Yeah, you know. I mean, people are always surprised that you're just a, a person. Like, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> <You're just laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's an ordinary bloke. That's I'll it. Out and pick up the newspaper out of my sidewalk every morning. Hmm. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure we all leave a piss every morning. You know, yeah, that's at least. absolutely. But it's funny. I mean, my uh, years ago, when I lived in my hometown in England, uh, we had a little band, and I just was playing guitar, and uh, with this guy called Keith, who was singing. And anyway, that that little thing ended, and I moved uh, to London, and. Uh, and I had this hit record uh, with my cousin and I saw Keith in the street and he came up to me and he said, I used to know you. I said, what? He said, I used to know you. I said, I know you did. You my Keith, what the fuck's up with you? I'm growing <laughs> for fuck's sake. Said, yeah. <laughs> but you're all famous now. They expected I would be completely different. And you don't wow. change. You're your no. person, you know. It's what's At all. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and it was just weird for him to say that. I used yeah. to know you. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, he probably still do. He probably does. Yeah. You're right. Haven't changed yeah. that much. Funny. Yeah. And that, that's and that's it goes back again to that's what this show is about. You know, it's that's what I enjoy about the show. That's what I enjoy about having these moments to to yeah. talk with uh, some of my favorite musicians. Now I'm happy to say fellow musicians because being yeah. able to play, being a, a musician for the last 20 years has has been a blessing and a big door opener. I mean, yeah. it's just it's so cool. Um, and I like this because I'm, you know, I've known Stuart forever. He wanted me to be a part of this whenever I could, and he was going to have you on here. He says you got to be on here because you love Graham Bonnet. And yeah. I've listened to you forever. I've admired you forever. I've emulated you on a lot of things, and uh, and to actually get to talk to you and see how cool and down to earth you are, it doesn't surprise me, but it's very refreshing, and I love it. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, I, I am very refreshing. No, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> Yeah. He's ever uh, too. Well, I'd, I'd love another. I'd love another can of Graham, please. <laughs> it's so refreshing. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you call me, Bethany? Oh, Bethany always says, um, "You're such, such a charming person. People love talking to you." I said, "Really? <laughs> you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to piss off. Right, because I'm not. Uh, I have no airs and graces. I really just mm -hmm. am me. That's yeah, it. that's all we can be. Uh, absolutely, but yeah. except that other guy, my uh, my split personality. What? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. You well, know. Yeah. All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah. No, but it's uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you guys. Yeah. Really thank you very much for, for being us. here tonight. Um, uh, I'll keep in touch with about a James Dean thing, but I'll yeah. also uh, keep in touch. Uh, just you know, on a personal basis, we'll we'll see about getting you back on the show too. But okay, also to throw some some good vibes too. You know, on a regular basis. And, yeah. Uh, because we are people, and that's what I love about this is uh, absolutely is we can be people. So, uh, so when we wrap up, if you got just a second, we'll, we can uh, be backstage for just a second. In the meantime, everybody, everybody in the chat tonight, we thank you for the millions of uh, viewers out there. We thank you for everybody at your home, Graham. We thank you, and uh, it's been a great time, man. Thank you so much thank for you. sharing all the stories and uh, adding to the human experience. My pleasure. Anytime. Fantastic. Next week, we'll be hanging out again Thursday night. And uh, next week is another show. I don't, I, I'm freaking out right now. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, but I do have a show. No, I know who it is. It's Mike Floros from a band called Steel City will be with us live next week. So uh, for me, Guy, and the wonderful Graham Bonnet, you're so refreshing. We will see everyone soon. And uh, rock on. Keep it up. Hammer away.